you know, we haven't, we've only played them the once this year and they beat us and, uh, you know, I think, you know, psychological advantage in finals is important and uh, I think you can tell by uh, how quiet our players are today, then really treating it as a, as a final today. Thinking about it a bit. They are, oh yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big test for us today. We've come a long way this year on our performances last year, but now this is where everything starts to count. You know, today's game and every game after that, this is what we've been looking for all year, so we're not going to let it slip. It may seem a strange question, and I know uh, the players can hear me asking it at the moment. Uh, is Preston suffering from an allergy? Every time you've been televised, you've lost. Allergic to television? Not every. I think we won a couple. Uh, uh, every time you... The five no. games... I'm sorry, the five games you've lost uh, have been on television. I didn't know that. That's no, correct. I didn't know that, I Rob. I keep coming yeah. up with these gems, don't I? No, well, uh, we'll make sure that doesn't happen today. That's, doesn't uh, worry you. I don't, I don't take any notice of whether it's televised or... Uh, or what, you know, no, I, that certainly wouldn't worry our players, I don't think, no. Well, it mightn't worry you, but uh, are the players aware of the cameras, etc.? Is there more I pressure? Or? I haven't asked them, no, I don't know. Right. <laughs> okay, um, let's talk about Peter Marshall coming back. Uh, it must be a big lift to the club, but then again, he's only played two senior games this year, missed 15 through injury. Oh, he's a class player. I think, uh, you know, top players like Peter, they can, uh, you know, he can miss a season and a half and they can come in. He's, the fact is that he's been training with us all along, doing all our sprinting and running and a lot of wind work so I don't think breathing will let him down today and uh, he's over the hand injury he played in the seconds last week and uh, did very well so uh, you know I've got no doubts about Peter because he's a top player and he's captain of this side you know we didn't hesitate in making him captain and uh, I know he'll do really well today. You're quite sure he's up to it? Oh well he's on it I think after the game he'll tell he's playing against Swan who's uh, played very well against us last time and uh, I think you'll see Peter will, will beat Swan. Well, Ted uh, Henry's made the point. You've made four changes, and uh, only one of them was compulsory. Is it a bit late in the year to be making changes, Harold? Experimenting. Um, well, you know, if blokes aren't. If we, if we feel that uh, uh, our side last week, perhaps I think you might have made a point before the game that if uh, uh, I thought our forward line hasn't been functioning for some seven or eight weeks, you know, what do you do? Do you? just sit back and let things happen or, or do you have a go yourselves and the selectors have seen fit to uh, do something about our forward line and I'm not worrying about our back line but uh, we've got a very good forward line in today we've got mobility in it um, I think we've got marking strength at full forward and centre half forward and uh, a lot of desperate flankers and uh, I think it's probably our best forward line we've had all year but time will tell today we're playing the top side at so Port Melbourne at Port Melbourne and uh, what you know it, we felt that these, you know, a couple of other players have been down in recent weeks, so it's a good, good test for us today, our forward line. That's why we've done that. And finally, Harold, any changes? Yeah, there is one change. Uh, yeah. Gordon Town won't be playing. Oh, so you're going to let us know. Go what's wrong with Gordon? Oh, he's got a crook leg, yeah. yeah. All right, well, I'm well, going bloke, in next bloke door now. I'll go him to do very well. I'm going in next door now, I'll go and tell him. No, no, that won't matter. They'll see the full back when, he, right. when they get out there. Right, no, uh, thanks very much for that, uh, Harold. Oh, and we don't uh, hide any, we don't hide anything. They go see him when they get out there. Well, so. good luck for today's game. Okay. Um, the two best sides in the competition, there's no doubt about that. Um, mm. And at five o'clock today, we'll know who's the better side. Well, we we'll hope it's us. Right, right thanks, so. Harold. Melbourne rooms and once a confident approach, very professional approach by the uh, Port Melbourne Club and we have Gary Bryce with us. Gary, uh, I've just uh, mentioned to Harold Martin that there's not a, a great deal at stake in today's game really if you look at it because uh, either way you're both going to be in the second semi-final. How are you treating it? Well I guess there's a bit of prestige at stake. Uh, there's, the four points don't really matter that much but I think the psychological advantage to the winning side today will be quite a bit uh, for, next, for the next game we play. Right, well now you have got uh, three players out in uh, Dermot who I noticed was uh, acting as runner in the reserves game, uh, Doyle and also Demetrio. Uh, three important players out, a pretty good test uh, for your back line against a very impressive uh, Preston line-up at forwards. Yes, well uh, I believe that we've got tremendous depth here at the club this year. Uh, we'd probably, I guess there would be well over 20 players that we could choose our grand final if, we, if we're lucky enough to get it, but certainly next, our next game we could choose at least 20 players to, to play. And I think that's a good position to be in. I think that the players who are in there doing the job today look with themselves very well. Right. Well, I want to single out one player. In fact, I notice him right behind us at the moment putting his jumper on Graham Anderson. Um, Graham is very close to his 50. In fact, I think he's, uh, he needs four goals for, his, uh, for the half century. Uh, how important is it that he fire? Well, 
it's not so important that he alone fire, but he's he's a very important part of our side, and he has been a, a regular goal kicker, as you've just mentioned. And uh, we look to him because he's an experienced player. He is a very important part of our side. Right. Well, not only he, but of course Freddie Cook. Well, we've got to have you those could go two right key through boards. our whole side, really. We've got uh, important players right through our team, mm. and that's that's the whole key to our success this year. It hasn't been a one-man band. It's been a tremendous team performance each time we've had a good victory. Gary, I know we're running out of time. I don't want to hold you up, but I must ask you about the, the probably what could be the key to the game, the battle of the big men. Annenson against uh, Hurd, who's run into top form. Mm. Yeah, well, Hurd, he's a very good player. Um, he played very well against us last time. I thought that in the previous game, Stretch shadowed him in the first half, and uh, I thought Bob Hurd won in the second half. Um, we were lucky enough to get a, a fairly good break on them. Their battle was certainly determine how the game will, will finish but it also relies on the players who play around them very much uh, I think they may negate one another to a certain extent at the knockouts so it's up to our players playing around them to do their job. Any changes? No we've got no changes. Right. The, uh, I know you won't want to answer this question but I'm going to ask you uh, if Port win a flag and you finish here do you have any aspirations of coaching a VFL side? No not at this stage I'm worried about today that's all I'm not worried about anything else I'm worried about uh, the game in two weeks' time, and then we'll look at the grand final after that. We're not there yet. That doesn't so mean to say that you wouldn't if the opportunity came along, coach a VFL side. I'm not even going to comment on that, uh, Rob. I'll just worry about being here at Port and making sure we have a good year this year. Let us know first when you've made up your mind, will you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Gary. Okay, Rob. Once Thank again, you. great to speak to you. Good luck for today's game. Good. Kid. Thanks. Well, there he is, the uh, captain and coach of uh, Port Melbourne, one of the real personality players and personalities in the VFA. And there's a few in the Port Melbourne side, of course. Gary Bryce, coach at Port Melbourne. As Brian Jones, seven years, and Chris Reynolds, three, the emergency umpires, Craig Herman, one, and the umpires' board representative is Les uh, Keeling. But I was going to say the Deafness Foundation is an umbrella Port Melbourne side, moving around, led by Gary Bryce. By the way, Phil, that uh, sports panel you were talking about will be next uh, Saturday morning, and it's on for the whole morning, so uh, you'll be able to uh, phone through your donation and speak to all these sporting personalities in the phone room, and we also have uh, some uh, very interesting segments too. Well, as we have the home team uh, coming up, Port Melbourne, uh, Ted, let's have a look at their selected side from Thursday night. Yes, Phil, it uh, will line up as selected. There's been no changes in the Port Melbourne side. As I mentioned before, uh, they've had three players, important players, Dermot, uh, Doyle and Demetrio out of this side, so it makes it quite a small back line. Bradbury at full back as we see Preston running onto the ground field. Yes, and uh, Preston very, very keen to do well. It'll be a psychological one for both sides today, and there has been a change in the Preston side, Ted. Yes, Phil, one change. That is Gordon Town, the full back of the Preston team, has to, had to withdraw due to a thigh injury which he actually um, incurred last week in the match against Baran. His place at full back with a big job against Fred Cook has been taken by Tony Cosma who will wear number 24 Guernsey. And Marshall of course coming back as the captain today and in the centre of the ground. Now the other games and they're very important in... Uh, oh we're just waiting on the uh, toss to take place on the far side of the ground. We're on the opposite side from the stand here and uh, quite a crowd uh, building up for today's uh, match. We have uh, supporters of course and uh, this is traditional every year with the wives of some of the footballers um, on what they call Blueberry Hill here and we have Sunbury Hill on the other side of the ground the supporters split up doesn't seem to be as many this year Ted as we have had in past years no I remember the Sunbury Hill that was uh, probably twice as many as uh, what we can see there for last year with the advantage of the uh, what's that end down there Rob that's the uh, Williamstown Road end Right, we said that for a purpose. Yes. Uh, Williams Town Road. Now, you've got a quick note there, Rob. Yes, uh, a great football name, Peter Freyer, brother of Ted Freyer, who still holds the VFA record for the most number of games, the goals, that is, 13 or 14, is in hospital in the Southern Peninsula Hospital, and a special cheerio from the, uh, and request from the Port Melbourne Club to say hello to Peter Freyer. Uh, Freyer. Okay, now we're just waiting on the umpires to get the uh, play in hand, uh, Barry Fitzpatrick and Keith Oxton. And uh, players back over their lines, and we're ready to get underway for this all-important VFA First Division game today. Signal to the timekeepers. And away we go. Vic Annanson going up with Big Bob Hurd. Hurd directing the knockout, goes well wide of the uh, pack. A pick-up here sees Bradbury, who's uh, not down at fullback. He was selected at fullback, sending it up towards the half-forward line, trying to gain possession as Paul Bolger, but he loses it to Kavanagh. Kavanagh up towards Christo. Christo takes the mark in the right forward pocket, shoots for goal off the side of the boot. 
Fred Cook over there at the tip of the goal square, indicating that he should have been kicking to him. Now, this is a worry for Fred Cook. He's got so many uh, players on the forward line who'll all want to have a ping at uh, goal. Uh, you've got um, down there Anderson, you've got Christo, also O'Reilly, all within uh, kicking distance of uh, goals, and maybe they might be ignoring uh, Cook. We'll see anyway. I noticed Frank Johnson's at fullback for Port Melbourne. Phil. Right, I thought that may come about. He's a regular fullback as he goes into the uh, centre of the ground. And this is Davies who has taken the mark and was manhandled nearly down to centre half forward. And that's where the umpire brings uh, Cooper back to on a penalty basis. Now Davies at centre half forward will put it to high in the air. Cook moving back, but uh, Hurd might have touched it. Let's see what the umpire says. No, it's hit the post. So there's the uh, first blood in the match. One minute after the commencement of play, one behind, up to Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne doing all the attacking so far in the first quarter. Now this is uh, Cosmo, the new fullback, to take the uh, kickoff. Sends it towards centre half back. Bryce goes for the hand pass out of the back. Comes through towards Priest, but uh, taken away from him by Kavanagh. Kavanagh has the ping at goal, and he's put it through for one point. So it's uh, two points on the board now to uh, Port Melbourne and Preston have yet to score. Cosma indicating he's uh, going to kick right upfield, straight up, and this is exactly what he's done. Up to centre half back, Hurd knocks it away from Anderson, then scoops it through his legs, through it really, and uh, breaking away there was Bill Swan, but the umpires called Swan back to kick over the mark. So Swan from just slightly wide of centre half forward for the uh, Port Melbourne side, gets the lead from Cook, but he's uh, sent it to a much higher authority in Gary Bryce, further afield. Gary Bryce now only 45 metres out from goal. The captain and coach of the Port Melbourne side puts the ball on its way, and again, I think this one's offline to make it three behinds in a row for Port Melbourne in a total of two and a half minutes. Port Melbourne doing all the attacking, but very inaccurate and not looking for the full forward, Ted. Well, they're not looking for full forward. I can see they can see uh, also Bob Hurd standing behind uh, Cook, which may put them off sending it up in the air to Fred Cook. Hurd uh, is intent on knocking it away from Anderson all the time as it comes through now towards Brian. Brian gets it to Peter Marshall. Marshall, the captain of Preston, first game for a long time, plays it up and Johnson comes out to take the mark in defence for Port Melbourne, playing at fullback. Johnson now gets the lead from Kavanagh on the wing on the other side of the ground. He in turn comes in to take the mark. So Kavanagh goes for a long run and then plays it into open territory in the centre of the ground. Allows O'Reilly to come up though to try and trap the ball. He ducked the head as he saw the player coming towards him, which was good play on uh, his part, even though he might have lost his head. He's uh, taken the uh, free kick right at the true centre position. He's gone for the hand pass, really. Gets it across to Evans. Oh, it must have been a kick. I, the umpire crossed between um, uh, him and uh, my line of sight. And it was a kick going to uh, that way. And that kick this time has come out to take the mark. Well, that uh, shows the dividends of playing two Cook. Well, well, there's no doubt about that at all. If uh, Bob Hurd is too far behind, obviously Fred Cook would probably outmark any other defender in the Preston team. Well, he'd uh, outpace him in leading too, of course. No doubt about that. Well, Cook lines him up now, only about 12 metres out from goal, and guides it right through the middle, and that's a goal up to Port Melbourne. Hi, is he Possessions to four in Port Melbourne's favour so far in the game, but here's another possession to Preston, and it will be taken by Marks. Marks now just wide of the centre of the ground. Port Melbourne are 1-3, Preston have yet to score. Preston kicking with the advantage of the win. And there it goes, over the centre line, up towards that half-forward line. The umpire blowing the whistle, giving a free kick to Brian for a trip. And Brian had to fox his own ball then. As he gets ready to take the kick from the half-forward line, right up towards the uh, centre-forward zone. Uh, down there, we see McGaw scouting around the pack, unable to get in there to get the ball. The umpire coming down, blowing the whistle, and it will be a ball up. Not far out from the uh, Preston goal, about 15 metres. As they set themselves, Annanson getting the knockout from the ruck, sharked away here by uh, the little uh, player, White. But it's taken now towards the half-back line for Port Melbourne, over the line, and out before the players could get to it. Yeah, I thought that was a big one out on the ground. Well, again, Anderson going up in the ruck, coming in behind him was McGaw, who thwart his uh, opportunity, but uh, Kavanagh 
Well, the umpire says Kavanaugh run over the line with it as he was about to move away. Swung the ball out of play. And it will be a throw in down there. All right, we're at the six minute mark. Bill Jacobs. In the forward pocket for Preston and uh, Annanson again pushing the ball across the line. Olympic tyre scoreboard port 1 3 and Preston yet to score and locked in the forward pocket for Preston at the Williamstown Road end or the left of the screen. Annanson was looking for Bradbury but it was Kavanagh to come through and move to centre wing. Went uh, quite some distance towards centre half forward. Good punch away by Warren into the centre of the ground of Wilkinson. Wilkinson can't get rid of it. And the umpire eventually said it's holding the ball against you. Play on was the call as Bucks picked it up and delivered to centre wing and spotting there is Marks. Marks number 21 of Preston onto the left foot, kicks it well with either foot and uh, he'll find Cooper on the half forward flank. Campbell 3-1, Waverley yet to score. Progress scores. It's Cooper. He's within kicking distance, particularly aided by the wind. And the distance is not quite McGaw. Oh, that's going to be hard to beat for mark of the day. Yes, that could be the Gillette mark of the day. It was a beauty down there, right near the goalpost. McGaw from practically point blank range. There it is, and it's a goal. Port Melton, a goal. Nine points to six. Olympic tyre scoreboard as we hit the seven-minute mark in the first term. Heard, pay it to Heard, out of the centre. That'll be in the back. And the free kick will go to Brian, number 19 of Preston. Brian to Bucks, Bucks towards centre wing, to Marks, Marks makes position up towards the half forward line. Good play by Swan who dispossessed Marks but uh, he recovers well and that's uh, into the forward pocket. A bit of a nudge in the back there, play on as the call as the ball goes over the line and out of bounds. Seven and a half minutes into the first term here at Port Melbourne. One goal, three to a goal. Port leading. Anderson, the man in front. One it down. Chance for Bradbury. Bradbury, Blake's uh, clear. Looking for Swan. Good knock away by Peter Marshall. Swan in the front berth. Coming to assist as Mark on. Marks. And the push in the back. Free kick to Marks at Preston. He's between the half forward line and forward pocket. The breeze is slightly against him coming from this side of the ground, I feel. At the eight-minute mark, Ken Marks, number 21 of Preston. There he is. To fire for goal with Preston score one goal and Port Melbourne one goal three. Port peppering away in the early stages of the quarter. Campbell 4-1, Waverly yet to score. And that's what I meant by the breeze. It's drifting it in just enough and that's a goal. Well, here, but before they do, Bill Barrett, what's happening over there at Turak Park? Well, Campbell 4-1. Uh, 25, Waverley haven't scored, but Camwell are too big and too strong at this stage. The Waverley side hasn't settled down, Phil, inexperienced. With the dry ground, both sides are fumbling the ball a little bit and miss kicking. So it uh, goes from there. OK, uh, Bill, we'll come back to you throughout the afternoon, but now Rob Asprey. Yes, and it's Preston taking the lead in the first quarter. They lead by three points at the moment. That's Bucks out there with the ball. And uh, quite a good-sized crowd here today to see a preview of the uh, preliminary for the second semi-final. There's uh, Cooper going up and he takes the mark. Play on, says the umpire. And he's... Uh, well, what happened there, Ted? You didn't agree with that? No, I didn't agree. I thought he could have balled it up because it looked like a mark. The player thought he had taken the mark and the players appeared to stop. But the umpire ball play on, he was paid hand in, uh, holding the ball against him. That's Kavanagh getting himself into trouble there. Number 40 on your picture. Picked up there by Davies. He gets his kick in, saving the day for Port Melbourne. Uh, packed the balance out there. Players going in. Well, there may not be a lot at stake in this game, but they're certainly playing as if their life depended on them. O'Reilly now across towards centre-half forward. And that's uh, Port Melbourne kicking to the right of your screen as Marshall, the captain for Preston, across the marks, handballs back. Bolger comes in now. He ha having great trouble picking the ball up. Down on his knees, and the umpire has found the kick, and it's going to Paul Bolger right there in the centre of the ground. There's the kick, the left uh, foot kick, down towards centre, half forward for Preston. Kicking to the left of your screen. Davies, it is, comes in. Gets in a quick kick. Going back towards Bradbury. He now picks the ball up, but uh, loses it, almost holding the ball. Cooper now for Preston comes through. Weaves his way around an opponent. Handballs to Mark on, and he's brought to the ground by Christo. And a free kick will be taken by Jim Christo against Mark on. Christo now comes to the outer side of the ground, and it's Swan accepting the mark there on the wing position, just short of the BFA side. 
You're watching the VFA match of the day on 10, and that's Squan now kicking to a lead there to Wilkinson. Wilkinson takes the ball, and he's nabbed to the ground by Ken Marks. But the umpire says free kick to Wilkinson against Barnes. He's on the uh, right forward flank. Is Wilkinson down towards centre half forward? O'Reilly's there. He has the ball knocked down. Price, the captain and coach for Port Melbourne, and holding the ball is the decision. Warren takes the ball, handball across to Priest, having trouble getting control. Now he picks it up immediately, handballs to Mark on. Mark on also having difficulty with the ball. A lot of desperation in this game at the moment. And it's Preston leading by three points. And a mark out there to Davies. Looks like a 15 metre penalty too being paid by the umpire. And he's about 25 metres closer to goal. Immediately plays on. Drives it into the uh, big sticks. Fred Cook is there getting a lot of attention too. He can't mark the ball. A kick there off the ground but it's forced through by Eton. Good defensive play there. Very dangerous for uh, Port Melbourne. And the uh, defender, Eton, forced it through for a behind to Port Melbourne. Takes them on to one goal, 4-10. To two straight goals to Preston, so the margin is now just two points. There's the ball back in the centre of the ground. Picked up by Markon for Preston, driven forward, but the umpire will play it down the ground. Apparently, uh, Markon was given a uh, thump in the ear. To use an expression that was... Uh, provided for me by our co-commentator and so it's white now kicking the ball to the uh, right hand side the forward pocket and coming out as Hallis taking a good strong chest mark Hallis about uh, 30 meters out from goal on a 45 degree angle picture of concentration and a great forward in the VFA great forward for Preston there's the kick by Hallis umpire moves across hasn't doesn't have to move far but it's four points to Preston the Olympic Tire scoreboard has the uh, margin now eight points. It's uh, three straight goals to Preston and Port Melbourne, one goal, four, ten. And uh, waiting for the bounce in the centre of the ground. Phil, who was your selection? I didn't make one, Rob. I know. Uh, I'll go for uh, Preston. I think they've lifted their game and they're playing well. Ian, uh, who are you selecting? Port Melbourne. Yes, I think I'll stick with uh, Port Melbourne also. Right now, the uh, ball through Anderson will be delivered down to the forward line. Fred Cook is there again under a lot of pressure, but a good, uh, when well, he gets his hands to it. No, it wasn't a mark. Swan sharks the ball off the pack. Uh, smothered there by Bucks. Picked up again by Swan. Gets his kick in just in time. Up goes, uh, well, coming out as Bucks actually with the ball now, but he, he loses possession, but the umpire says he was tripped, and Bucks will take the kick on the right back flank position for Preston. This is turning into a very good game, Rob. Yes, a very exciting game, and we've now played in the first quarter 15 minutes. 15 minutes in the match of the day as Marshall boots the ball over the line, coming back for his first senior game, the captain of Preston, in uh, about 15 weeks. Phil. Right, Rob, and uh, just waiting on this throw-in to be affected with uh, Preston on three goals straight, Port Melbourne one four. There's uh, Hurd getting the knockout from the rucket, comes down to Mark on. Mark on out here towards Peter Marshall. Marshall to the half forward line. There are Port players everywhere down here, and moving in for him at the moment is Mick Thompson of uh, Port Melbourne. But a pick up by Marks. Marks sends it up towards centre forward, and uh, down goes Hallis. And this is Johnson coming out, moving right upfield with the ball, and mulls it. And look at little Mark on uh, go in there, but a pick up this time by Hallis. And Hallis now screws it towards the goal. Well, Preston are four goals straight, and uh, there you have the Port Melbourne score. Preston kicking with the advantage of the wind towards the Williamstown Road end of the ground. Goss is tipped over the first time I've sighted him, trying to get through his white. White gets a hand pass out of the pack here, but no one able to break away with it, and the umpire will come in for a ball up. And there's a score in the camberwell Waverley game. Waverley have at last scored a goal over there. And uh, there's Annanson getting the knockout from the ruck down towards uh, Goss. Goss couldn't break away. The umpire blows the whistle as he's grabbed pretty high, and he gets the free. Goss, who hasn't uh, been in the team that much of late through injury, comes up towards the half-forward line. Here's the opportunity for uh, Goldsneak Anderson. Anderson now screws it back over his head towards that centre half-forward zone, and that was O'Reilly coming in to take the mark. He can judge the flight of a ball well, this fellow. Good mark. I suppose the main flaw in O'Reilly's game would be when the ball hits the ground. But very, very mobile and good in the air. 
So Riley won't be relying on a lead from Cook. He's too close to goal. Only 22 metres out, I'd say, right in front. And there it goes on its way right through the middle. And that takes Port Melbourne onto 2 4. And after the bounce of the ball, we Bramley putting it into attack for Preston up towards centre half forward, but Davies taking the mark, gets it out towards Swan. Swan getting a bounce, but doesn't quite control it. Does now. Hand passes to Evans. Evans can't control the ball. They're fumbling a bit here, Port Melbourne, as it comes back to Swan, up towards the half forward line. Eaton is the player who goes down on it. Dribbled away from him by Warren. Comes through to Marshall. And Marshall in a bit of trouble as he gets the uh, pass out wide. And there's Bramley with a pass to Eaton again. Eaton gets a kick in at last up to mark on on the outer wing and mark on not wasting any time Grant when not in possession he handballed it away and got it well clear and then was grabbed and gets the free kick so geelong west to one point in their game Grant leading one one and now mark on with his long high kick downfield in towards the left forward pocket and they're punching it away from Anderson on every occasion. Cooper gets the ball, but it will be taken now by Davies. to be put around the wing towards Swan. Swan coming in will have the opportunity to put it now right up towards the half-forward line. Players move out, and uh, there's Warren moving in. Punched away from him uh, by the big fella Grant O'Reilly, and it will be thrown back in once again. So on the half-forward line for Port Melbourne, Ruckman set themselves, Heard going up, uh, gets it the way wide, Goss is the player to grab the ball, he's brought down with the ball in possession, but the umpire has decided that he tried to punch it away, and it will be a ball out. This is Ogston, doing the bounce, Kavanagh is the player to get it away, he's centre of the ground it is at the moment, and Bucks is the player bearing in on it, using quite a bit of pace. Turns on the um, left foot, then the hand pass to Warren. Warren now, nearly grabbed, gets it right up towards the uh, forward zone, and the mark has been taken by Glenn Evans. So Evans, half back line, onto the uh, stand wing. Players, Wilkinson gets into position, and a juggling mark out there by Bucks in front of Wilkinson. He'll be paid. Old Preston playing rather strongly as we have Frankston 2-2 trailing Caulfield 3-3. There's the kick on its way towards that centre half forward zone. Return back in towards the centre, moving in his Kavanagh. Can't control the ball. And little Goss uh, scouting around the pack as well, but the umpire will call for a ball up again. Bill Jacobs. Well, it's a battle of the back lines as I see it at the moment. Each back line uh, supreme over the respective forward lines. Annanson, uh, one of the rear knockouts that time. A chance here for Cooper. Too slow in getting rid of the ball. Goss. Goss flipping it to Thompson. Thompson can't get rid of it either. And eventually coming out of the pack across to Marshall. Uh, holding the ball might have been the call. Play on to Goss. Goss of Port Melbourne out of the centre to the half forward line. A chance for Jim Christo. Bad bounce. Eaton coming through strongly for Preston. Still prepared to try a bounce on a rather slippery surface. And down there to Port Melbourne. It was Johnson out to Swan. Swan at centre wing. Everybody waiting for a free kick which wasn't there. Peter Marshall disposes to the half forward line and that's a good mark for McGaw. He's second. Campbell seven goals, three to Waverley, one goal down at Turek Park. 45 points to six. Whilst here it is Preston four goals and Port Melbourne two four on the Olympic tyre scoreboard with Hallis lining them up from 35 to 40 metres out. Hallis number 39 and swinging away a little bit it's through for Gut. Right, uh, well that takes uh, Preston on the five goals straight and Port Melbourne uh, two goals four and Bill Barrett it seems to be a runaway uh, job over the scores seven three do we have it back here and uh, Bill Jacobs well it's five goals here to Preston and two for Port Melbourne Olympic tie scoreboard with the ball coming out of the centre to the advantage of Port Melbourne will be taken by their centre man Swan who is providing quite a headache for his opponent Peter Marshall and from Preston's point of view would have to be silenced the defensive work there but it's gone to mark on Mark on to centre wing to Preston's half forward line. McGaw thumped away and recovered well. That is McGaw travelling from half forward flank, looking for Hallis with the kick and pass as well as Stray. And it's out of bounds on the full for the free kick to be taken by Port Melbourne's Johnston. Johnston to Bradford. Good defensive work by Port, and now they come into attack. 
It'll be through Bradbury, the left footer, number 16, to centre wing position. Near Warren, down to Wilkinson. Wilkinson to Kavanagh, who's probably one of Port's best players. Still on the centre wing position, with Port unable to advance into attack until they get the free kick in front of their own packed grandstand. It will go to Port Melbourne captain and coach Gary Bryce. From centre wing, over towards the centre half forward spot and sitting nicely there, thank you very much, was Wilkinson. Five goals to 2 4. Wilkinson booting Port into attack. Cook from behind, no hope. Heard in front. It wasn't Cook's fault. They're uh, playing one in front of him, one behind. But it's going to go to Swan. Swan under pressure from Marshall to Anderson. Anderson in the forward pocket. And it's uh, Bolger to come across and get it to Marshall. Peter Marshall out of the back pocket and into attack, swinging to set a wing. White trying desperately down there to Brian, number 19. Brian breaks. Hand passes straight to Anderson. Anderson again to Swan and coming up field up towards the half forward line. Goss in the middle of the pair. Not tall enough. And the free kick goes to Preston. Eaton. Eaton, number 38 of Preston. Out of the back pocket to Bob Hurd. It's five goals to 2 4. Preston leading. Hurd out there to Priest at centre wing. Driving into attack, and it's all Preston. Hallis. And Hallis will kick the distance. Hallis, true centre half forward. It's not a long ground. And Hallis, the big chance to go again for Preston. The kick, plenty of distance. And he's got the required accuracy. Another goal for Preston. Oh, it's Preston 25. now, leading by 20 points on the Olympic tyre scoreboard, which sees uh, Port Melbourne two goals, four, 16. Drowning Preston, six goals. That's 36 points. And the uh, big crowd here at Port Melbourne loving the game. Ideal conditions. Sunshine streaming down. Ideal conditions for watching football anyway. Psychologically, there is a lot at stake. At this stage, looks like uh, Port Melbourne uh, heading for defeat. But, of course, it is only the first quarter and Preston are kicking with the breeze to the left of your screen. There's Kavanagh down there trying to get position. Gets a quick handball in. Christo moves in. He's knocked aside. And the umpire has uh, seen a uh, infringement. It'll go to Eaton. And looks like uh, a 15-metre penalty to boot. Eaton now immediately plays on. Keeps the ball low. Down towards McGaw getting up there. He was the man who uh, took that big mark five minutes into the first quarter and certainly is a contender for the Gillette mark of the day. Across to centre half forward. The ball knocked down by the big pack into the wide open spaces. It's Brian now. He'll handball across to Mark on. Mark on will line up the big sticks, but it's offline. In fact, it's way offline out on the full. Ted, you weren't impressed. Wasn't impressed with that. Not when he had two Preston players, he could have passed that ball to quite easily then, and he put the ball onto his left uh, boot. He's a right foot kick, and it was a very lazy kick, undisciplined kick, really. Comments there from Ted Henrys, former VFA champion of the Preston Club, and of course, JJ Liston medal winner also. There's the kick from the left back forward, uh, back pocket for uh, Port Melbourne. Moving in is uh, Christo. Jim Christo takes the ball over the line in front of Marks and out of bounds. Moved uh, on to two and a half minutes of time on now in the first quarter. 20 points the margin in favour of Preston on the Olympic tyre scoreboard. The big men there, an infringement found by the umpire. It's going to go uh, against McGaw, and it goes to Vic Annanson. Annanson decides to uh, handball. It's Christo, gets his kick in now. The outer uh, wing position. Eaton in front of Goss. Goss now gets in front of his opponent and gets a kick in. <laughs> no play on, says the umpire. It looks like, no, no, it's uh, been paid. The mark has been paid to Grant O'Reilly. O'Reilly from the wing position, drives it across, held up there by the breeze, Freddie Cook flies high, he can't take the ball, but Wilkinson snaps it up now, lines up the goals, in towards the umpire, and it's full points to Port Melbourne. Barry Fitzpatrick, Port Melbourne, Annanson gets the ball down, having a, uh, a great battle there with Hurd, Cooper now, drives it down towards the scoring zone for Preston, tucked away there, out towards the uh, right forward pocket position. Alice is there, so is White, White calling for the free kick, but it's over the line and out of bounds. The Olympic tyre scoreboard shows Preston six goals straight, 36. There it is. Port Melbourne, three goals, four, 22. And a very exciting first quarter. Four and a half minutes of time on has been played. Ball now being uh, defended there by Port Melbourne. There's the kick across the centre of the ground by Davies, down towards the centre half forward position. And it's Warren, the defender for Preston, gets a handball into Bolger. He uh, misdirected there, and Kavanagh comes in, sharks the ball. It's Kavanagh, goes for a bit of a run, 
Across back to Warren, so it's kick to kick at the moment. Warren doesn't muck round, he immediately uh, plays on. Oh, big uh, player going up there high, but uh, behind the pack is Ken Marks. Gets his kick in, it's floating in towards goal. It's going to be close. No, it's not through. It's over the line and out of bounds. The left forward pocket position for Preston. Kicking with the advantage of the breeze. Ted, what would you say that breeze would be worth? Well, probably something like three goals, I'd say, Rob. So Preston has a definite advantage in this quarter. Annanson have uh, posed to uh, McGaw there. It was Annanson who got into McGaw's back, but the umpire said it was all clear, and uh, Port Melbourne will defend. Uh, trying to pick the ball up for now for uh, Port Melbourne is Graham Anderson. Weaves his way back now, out towards the wing position, right in front of our commentary position on the outer side of the ground. Bryant it is, handballs across to Hurt, playing a good game in this first quarter. Bolger takes possession. An awkward looking kick, but it goes in, uh, to the man he met it for, is Ken Marks. Marks, a great player, one of the personality players of the Preston side, with that splash of long hair, but it's marked there in defence by Thompson for Port Melbourne. There's Brian in front, goes up and takes the mark under pressure. Phil. Yes, Rob and Brian now from the half uh, forward line, straight up towards the centre forward zone. Look at the move in under the ball, but off the hands of the pack. Bramley is the player in possession. He goes to the hand pass, but it goes to the boundary line, throw into the effect. We have Preston six goals straight and Port Melbourne three four. Throw in down on the forward zone for Preston. McGaw going high in the air, but Annanson getting the knockout from the ruck. It came across towards Kavanagh, who got it even wider. And uh, there's John Christo now with uh, possession. Comes through to Kavanagh. Kavanagh around the wing in front of the stand, very close to the boundary line. It's out. Right in front of the Norman Goss stand. On the centre wing position. Uh, Riley will go up with uh, Hurd this time. And there they go, leaning on one another. Hurd getting the knockout over his head, but a kick sees the ball up towards the uh, half forward line as the siren goes to end the first quarter. And a good lead there to Preston. They're six goals straight with Port Melbourne on 3 4 22. Comments from Bill Jacobs. Undoubtedly Preston's quarter. They attacked from the centre, although they were beaten in the centre by Swan, but they got the ball out of the centre more so than uh, did Port Melbourne. Uh, their half forward line and forward line played pretty well. They were too tall for the Port Melbourne defenders. Uh, I'm yet to be convinced that Preston are going to take this game out. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next quarter, but all in all, Preston's quarter, they played well and they kicked accurately. Ted Henry's. Well, I think Preston started off very well, Phil, in a very entertaining first quarter of football. Heard, no doubt, is on top of Annanson. This is a big uh, key to the game, really. And Preston's smaller men are playing very well also. Marshall is playing well, but I think Swan, his opponent, is playing better than him. And Swan is uh, directing a lot of play up onto the forward line. The defence of Preston is very good, as we saw in that quarter. All in all, a very good game, but no doubt I agree with uh, Bill. That was Preston's quarter. Good football and straight kicking. Do you think, uh, still think Port can win at 10? Well, yes, I'm waiting to see at half-time, Phil. Once Port and Melbourne have the use of this win that Preston had in the first quarter, which I said is probably worth something like three goals, I think that will tell the story. Righto, and now statistics on the game from Ian. The kick-getters, Kavanagh played a great first quarter with eight kicks. Davy seven, and Swan, the biggest kick-getter on the ground with 11 kicks. Preston kick-getters, Marks roving while the herd with seven kicks. Bucks five, Mark on six, and Eaton a strong defender with four kicks. Goal kickers for Port Melbourne, one each to Cook. O'Reilly and Wilkinson, and for Preston, four to Hallis, a great first quarter, and one each to McGaw and Marks. Marks for the first quarter, 17 to Preston, 19 to Port Melbourne, three kicks, 11 to Port Melbourne, and 14 to Preston. Well, the Waverley Camberwell first semi final. Well, now the umpire signalling to the timekeepers with money flying around li right, left, and centre here. Paran 4 2, leading Geelong West 1 3. And uh, on the bounce of the ball, we see Goss getting rid of it down towards the half forward line. O'Reilly coming out, battling away with Warren. Warren is the player to try and break away, but the umpire blowing the whistle. O'Reilly ran back looking for the free kick, but it'll be Warren to get the free. So Warren of uh, Preston now plays it under the stand. Up they fly for it. McGaw flew very high, failed to take the mark. Little mark on Gaines' possession. Kicks it over the shoulder, but the player going down on the shoulder was Vic, Vic Annanson. So Annanson, after taking the mark, looks for Swan in the centre. And who's to take the mark but Swan? Marshall not playing too badly after having uh, not playing, uh, played since the about the second game of the season. He's missed 15 so far this season. Up goes Cook, and uh, Cook takes two bites at it to pull in the mark down the Williamstown Road end of the ground. Cosmo, Cosmo's too short for Fred Cook, Phil. That's obvious. Yes, uh, they need Hearn down there. 
the as bulge they were too. Doing in the, yes, as they were doing in the first quarter. They'd be better if they uh, put Bulge at the fullback, who's a much taller player than Cosmo. All right, well, Fred Cook about to fire a shot towards the goals. On its way it goes, and it's through for full points to Port Melbourne. I was reminded through the week about all the uh, various players who worked for Puma after seeing Fred Cook kick that goal. We missed John Henry uh, last week. Uh, of course, Ted said he didn't work there, but we all know that uh, John does. So <laughs> we'll be looking forward to seeing him sometime in the future, John. You make some outlandish statements at times, Phil. Right. There goes the kick up towards the uh, half-forward line of uh, Preston. A hand pass comes across to McGaw, who's in a bit of trouble. He hand passes back to Mark on. Can he get out of this? Mark on desperately goes for the hand pass, and uh, eventually it's Bradbury gaining possession to break away cleanly. Gets the uh, hand pass in, and this will be Swan to get away for Port Melbourne. Good kick by Swan, right up towards O'Reilly, and O'Reilly moving out. Once you see it going towards this player, he can judge the flight of the ball so well that you can almost certainly say he'll take the mark. Fred Cook making... Uh, oh, bang, into Cook. O'Reilly will go for the long kick. It'll be well off line. And O'Reilly was uh, a bit winded there. He must have got a nice one in the ribs. Well, I think we saw that too as he came through. And Sandringham uh, going well against Brunswick in their match. Uh, gee, the uh, team to get into the fall will be very interesting by these results coming through so far today. And there goes the kick on its way towards the half-back line. Off O'Reilly's hands, goes to Mark on, and puts it high in the air. They fly for it. No one's staying down. Scooped away this time by Kavanagh. Out towards Evans. Evans here to Annanson. Annanson back to Kavanagh. And look at Swan on his own. And Swan has accepted the pass right near the boundary line on the outer wing. Swan with his 14th kick. Down towards Cook. Forced away from him. And again, Preston defending well through Priest. Can they still get it away? Marks misses the hand pass. Annanson spending a lot of time on the ground, but still pretty effective as the umpire comes in and indicates that it will be a baller. Centre half forward for uh, Port Melbourne. They're doing most of the attacking so far in this quarter, as they did in the early stages of the uh, first quarter. Hand pass out here to Paul Goss, who puts it off line. Very clearly seen there, the goal umpire indicating another behind. So Preston, six goals. They've failed to score this quarter, and uh, Port Melbourne have scored 1-1. They are now 4-5, 29 to Preston, six goals straight, 36. And... We're just waiting on uh, Cosmo to take the kickoff for Preston from the Williamstown Road end of the ground. He gets it right out towards the uh, wing. Hurd uh, has it punched away. Annanson trying the same tactics on Hurd. Both players are punching the ball away from one another as it's kicked towards Cooper. And a good mark by uh, Cooper. Remember him last week taking a, a mark parallel to the ground, much in the manner of a soccer, soccer goalie. To Marshall. Marshall tried to dribble it away and dribbled it the wrong way for Kavanagh to pick it up. Kavanagh runs a mile, but look down there is Christo. Christo and Eaton both going after the ball. Priest is trying to back up for Preston. Number 10 in the background or in the foreground there, but it's gone over the line. I couldn't see anything that amusing. It might have been a yawn. But it's a throw in. O'Reilly setting himself in the ruck, but Bulger gets the knockout. Eaton is the player to get it away, and the umpire blowing the whistle as he runs back to speak to a player. Then we'll go upfield, and it'll be a free kick to be taken by Wilkinson, is it? No, Bucks. Bucks on the half-back line. Bucks goes for his kick towards the wing. Anderson goes for the big punch away. Look at that for a punch. Gets it nearly back up the half-forward line. Anderson gets it across to Swan. Swan streaking downfield again offline. And another behind up to Port Melbourne. They go to 4-6, 30, with Preston six goals straight, a total of 36. How's the match going over at Turak Park? Uh, Bill Barrett. One bill to another at Bill Jacobs. At the six and a half minute mark into the second term, Port peppering away at goal but unable to kick straight at the moment. And uh, a free kick to Port Melbourne near enough to the centre of the ground will be played to Grant O'Reilly. O'Reilly looking for the lead from Cook and he's getting it too but intercepting there. It's bad luck for Cook there but the ball's come out to Marks at Preston. Getting it further afield. That was Cosmo up towards the centre of the ground. 
Cooper going in strongly across to Hurd. Hurd playing well for Preston. Looking for White and finding him. No. Play on as the call and Cooper does it again. Well, he didn't get rid of it. Most people agreed with the decision. Across towards the centre half back position, centre half forward. And Mark on holding the ball, but play on there to Cooper. Cooper to Brian, down to Annanson. It's rugged. Annanson disciplined football out of defence to Goss. And Goss across to O'Reilly. Has to spoil. Warren striving there and getting the free kick. It's between the centre of the ground and centre wing. Warren getting the lead from Marks. Maybe it'll beat him over the line. He'll take it over the line. It was out. With the boundary umpire standing at the back of him. Still play on as the call. Wilkinson to Goss at centre wing. And Goss gets it away to half forward. O'Reilly the chance. Away from him down towards Kavanagh and Priest. On the half forward line for Port Melbourne. But a free kick is found for Preston. Out of that pack. And there's Bucks coming up with the ball. Scoreboard is 4-6 to Port Melbourne and six goals to Preston at the seven minute mark into the term the ball from Bucks coming up to centre wing down to Marks who's playing well whipping it towards centre wing further afield and Mark on Mark on at centre wing standing the mark there is John Christo the defender for Port Melbourne Mark on stopping starting stammering with the lead here from White and Wilkinson number 15 put it across the line Seven and a half minutes into the second term. Tight game. Ball coming back into Annanson. Paran going pretty well against Geelong West down there at Geelong West. 7 3 to 2 5. And here the free kick to Annanson. Big fella trying to get away, but uh, he wasn't able to out with the umpire on that occasion. I think he knew before he started. Preston six goals, Port 4 6. Annanson, one of those long hand passes of his to Jim Christo, who drives to centre wing, coming up as O'Reilly, Grant O'Reilly knocking it to the ground, going in solidly there, was number 10 of Preston Priest, and coming up with a free kick for a knock in the back was O'Reilly. O'Reilly at centre wing, clock ticks over to the eight minute mark, and O'Reilly drives in towards full forward. Cook coming from behind, had to spoil, he was being held by Cosmo, picked up by Kavanagh, and he hit the post. Well, Kavanagh's uh, been gathering kicks of plenty, 11 kicks, and at the nine minute mark he's hit the post and Port now showing the signs of inaccuracy on four goals, seven trailing Preston, six goals on the Olympic tyres scoreboard. That's 11 scoring shots to six. So if Port can find accuracy, they're in with a chance of a lead at half time. Cosma coming up to the line. And Cosma's decided that straight down the centre is the best course. High at the back there was Heard number nine. It went to Mark on. Mark on delivers into the centre. Bradbury in front, number 16 of Port Melbourne. Oh. Play on as the call to John Christo. Backing up as Jim Christo. And the free kick goes to his brother John, number two. There he is at centre wing. Up to the half forward line. O'Reilly's Port's best bet and coming from behind was Heard to spoil and in fringe, I think. And the free kick goes to Port Melbourne. The tackle too high on O'Reilly. There's O'Reilly at half forward flank for Port. A goal as the interchange coming on for Preston. Greg Marshall coming on as O'Reilly shoots for goal. And Cook's in the goal square. Heard again thumping away from Cook. Cook recovers, pops it through, one point. So that's uh, four goals, eight. That's 12 scoring shots to six with Preston still holding the lead by four points. Obviously the instructions to the Preston side with O'Reilly, Cook and Anderson. I had to punch the ball away on every occasion from them, and it's paying dividends, Rob. Yes, certainly is, uh, Phil. 12 scoring shots to Preston, six at the moment. Very inaccurate kicking there by Preston. 36 plays 32, the margin, four points. Very inaccurate kicking by, very accurate kicking, I should say, by uh, Preston. Now it's Cooper marking the ball on the wing position on the outer side of the ground, down towards the uh, right forward flank, with uh, Preston kicking to the right of your screen. Scramble there of players. Umpire watching it closely and will bounce the ball right in front of our commentary position on the outer side of the ground. The match of the day at the margin of four points in favour of Preston. That uh, player there being uh, held is Cooper. Bradbury's there trying to get possession. Umpire will call for it on the wing position proper. This time, of course, Port Melbourne are kicking with the advantage of the breeze. 
which seemed to have dropped a bit. Big Vic Anderson slaps the ball down. Graham Bucks grabs it now. There's his kick. All by himself. And so, oh, no, a lot of attention there, but he will get the free kick. There's the uh, defender in Evans playing the role of the defender. There's uh, a lead by Jim Christo. Oh, he slips over at the crucial moment. Could have marked that ball easily. He's still got a paddock. Picks it up now. There's his kick. Right down towards full forward. Fred Cook is there. He gets the front position, and Cook comes out with the mark to the joy of the Port Melbourne crowd. Well, Port Melbourne, the boroughs are fighting back. Freddie Cook has two goals, one. A straight kick here would put Port Melbourne in front. At the 12-minute mark of the second quarter. Fred Cook moving into goal. An important goal for Port Melbourne. Umpire moves across. Four points it is to Port Melbourne. Down towards the uh, forward zone now, and the umpire has found infringement. Looks like it's going to Ken Marks. Ted, you saw it. What happened? Well, a player was trying to grab hold of Marks, then Marks had possession of the ball, but unfortunately he pushed him in the back, so that's how the free kick came about. Well, plenty of leads down there, too, for Marks, but who did he kick it to for Jim Christo? That's, uh, yes, that's Peter Marshall, who was uh, on the uh, mark there. Bradbury now takes it to Port Melbourne, will drive them into attack. Fred Cook is down there again. Ball knocked down by Priest into the left forward prop position. Goss has got the run of the ball, or did have. He can't get control of it, though. Now dragging it out is Anderson. Goss is back in there. He'll oh, he swap there. Umpire will call for it, couldn't get rid of it. And he'll ball it up in the left forward pocket. Only about uh, 15 metres out from the scoring zone for Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne leading by just two points. There's the bounce. O'Reilly is content to go in and try and take it. Kavanaugh kicks it off the ground across to the umpire and one behind. Anderson, it was. Five goals, nine, 39. Makes the difference uh, three points. Preston, six straight goals. Bolger at fullback, elects to kick to the uh, grandstand side of the ground. Knocked down, gives Jim Christo the chance. There's his kick. Screws it back in towards Fred Cook, setting himself, and he's got the mark. Second grab. Good, strong mark there by Fred Cook. Beautiful mark. To the applause Even. of uh, our commentators, <laughs> Ted. Well, Bill, you were the one clapping. Well, Bill Jacobs was the one clapping then. It's marvellous what a dollar will do. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how you get dubbed in, too. Yes. Fred Cook now, already kicked three goals. Lines up the big sticks. It's another one to Port Melbourne. And we're just waiting on the bounce to take place. Preston, six straight goals. Port Melbourne, six, nine. Can Preston get it away from the centre? They're trying to get it out of the mud patch at the moment. No one able to uh, pick it up cleanly. That was Cooper trying to burrow through the pack. Got it around the neck, obviously, and will receive the free kick. So Cooper now from the centre goes for the long kick. Looking for McGore, who's under the ball, but a bit far under it. Coming up to assist him was Hallis. It's a hand pass to Marks, who's running in towards goal. It's on its way, and what's the score? It's a goal to Preston. Well, Preston have kicked souls in Port Melbourne, 6-9. Uh, and there's Preston into attack again, up towards the half-forward line. But Evans is thwarting that uh, forward move in coming in and taking that mark at centre-half back. Swan has made position wide of the centre to take the mark. He's not wasting any time either. Players settling in. Grant O'Reilly down there between two uh, Preston players. Fails to take the mark. Bulger came into it. He uh, goes over, tripped, or is it kicking in danger? Kicking in danger, according to the umpire, and Bulger will get the free kick. He's playing at full-back at the moment. Coburg Dandenong. Coburg, uh, oh, only two points up on Dandenong. But it uh, doesn't look as though they'll uh, make the four. Camberwell, 11-6. Waverley starting to come back. We'll have a comment from Bill Barrett in a few moments. With players held up here, and uh, there we have Warren gaining possession. Oh, Leighton trying to get rid of the ball. He's got rid of it now. Uh, but a mishand pass to uh, Mark on. It eventually ends up with Annanson. Annanson with a pass here to Evans. And Evans left foots it. Not a good kick from Evans. Goes towards Swan. That's Eaton who gets it to Marshall. Marshall now with a kick across towards Cooper. And Cooper comes in to take a strong mark in the centre of the ground. He uh, gets his kick in towards centre forward. But oh, leading out is Johnson. Gets a foot in the air to go on with. And while this is happening, let's have a quick report now from uh, Bill Barrett over at Turak Park. Waverley are coming back into the now, and this uh, running the ball over the line and out of bounds in defence for Preston in the right back pocket. 
Scores of rating here. Preston seven straight goals and Port Melbourne a 6-9 in a very entertaining game. Preview to the uh, second semi-final is Grant O'Reilly taking the mark on the uh, throw-in. Gets it out though towards uh, Brian. Brian now in the direction of Eaton. The short back and sides as he gets it to uh, Bucks. And uh, Bucks now a kick in towards the centre. McGaw goes up, fails to take the mark. They lose the run of the ball. Davies is the player to win on it. Uh, McGaw goes down in front of uh, Davies. Bradbury is up there as well, but Cooper comes into it again. A strong player out here towards Marks, who has the player within 20 metres of him. He's gone for the pass here. Pellis slips at the vital moment, couldn't go up to take the mark. And in behind him is Thompson to take it away. Thompson to the wing on the stand side of the ground. And this is Bryant gaining possession now for Preston. He plays it a little mark on behind him is uh, Christo, John Christo. He gains possession now to put it back on towards that half-forward line. Bryce is down there, comes into it now, scoops the ball up. The umpire's calling play on. This player, Cosmo, is battling away as he gets it towards the half-forward line. Davies taps it down to the ground. And now, Port Melbourne from Bradbury to Annanson, Annanson to Goss. And Goss now from the centre of the ground towards O'Reilly. O'Reilly too far under the ball. And look at the swan move into the ball now. He'll call him. He's in trouble. Slips. Puts it over the line and out of bounds. He was using a lot of pace then, Swan Ted. Well, he is a player with plenty of pace, Phil, and the way he's playing, he's on top of the world at the moment. You can always seem to gather yourself an extra yard in pace when you're playing well. Bill Jacobs, he's Nine, had 16 kicks. 19 minutes into the term in the forward pocket for Port Melbourne, and Port uh, inaccurate um, as against Preston's accuracy on seven goals. Forward pocket for Port. Olympic tyre scoreboard, seven goals to Preston, 6-9 to Port Melbourne. Back into play, Preston will relieve the pressure, only temporarily. Nobody able to convert, but get the ball away there, it's up the centre wing. Annanson lumbering after the ball, but effectively tapping it back quickly. A chance there for Port through Johnston to uh, Evans. Evans in turn to Kavanagh. Kavanagh, prolific kick getter from centre, 16th kick, up the centre wing, and the weight up to the full forward spot, and there's a free kick against Port. Going further upfield to Eaton. Eaton still trying to get control of the ball and can't. Jim Christo out in the direction of Bryce, who's uh, got to lift. Hand pass will find Goss, and Goss, a beautiful pass to O'Reilly, but just a bit too much for the big fella to accept it, and it's going to be cleared uh, by Eaton. Eaton to centre wing with Port uh, uh, coming up towards there, towards Johnson, and the mark played to Greg Marshall. 21 minutes into the term, it's... Uh, Pace is uh, pretty quick here at Port Melbourne, up towards the half-forward line, taken away by Bradbury, the Port Melbourne half-back, and from centre wing, Come on, delivered up looking for O'Reilly, and it's too full and too far, and it's over the line and out of bounds. Well, uh, the pass from Goss to O'Reilly went like a bullet, and just a little bit too high for O'Reilly to accept it whilst on the move. 21 minutes into the second term, O'Reilly doing the ruck work successfully across towards the full forward spot, but Bolger will come out there, and Bolger gets it to Cosma. Cosma going through the centre of the ground, relieving the pressure, or attempting to as Bradbury, smothering well. Bradbury out of the centre, this time across to Kavanagh again. Kavanagh to Wilkinson. Wilkinson towards the full forward spot. Cook coming from behind. Had a grab, play on as the call. <laughs> Clapping the decision was the young fellow. Port Melbourne's forward pocket. Heard, got it away into the pack of players. And the free kick will come out of there to Brian, number 19 of Preston. Brian taking it from the back pocket up towards the centre wing spot. McGaw's his best bet in front. Knocked away from him. That's McGaw leading in the race for the ball, number 14. And there's a free kick to push in the back. And Port take it. They'll take it across there through Wilkinson. Wilkinson out to O'Reilly. And he plunges forward to take a beauty. Bill, what a dominating player this Grant O'Reilly is. He's the big headache, or one of the big headaches to Preston today. Once they get that ball to centre half forward and put it in the air to him, he'll take a, a fair percentage of those marks. And then we see Frankson trailing Corfield there. 19 points. O'Reilly lining them up from the boundary line. There he is, right near the fence. And as Teddy said, a dominating player. Spearing it towards goal. It's just a little bit offline. And it's Cook's mark, perhaps. One point the signal from the goal. Port Melbourne an inaccurate 6-10. Preston seven goals. And that's 46 to 42. Eaton will put the ball back into play. 
And he swung it across to Warren. Warren, who was a dominant player in the first quarter. But he backs up. Warren across towards the half-back flank. Annanson going in strongly. And the umpire will have to bounce. At the 23 and a half minute mark, it's uh, six goals, ten Port Melbourne and Preston seven goals, a difference of four points. And Annanson handing it back to the man in charge. Half forward flank for Port Melbourne, left half forward flank. Annanson out of there. Greg Marshall eventually getting the ball to centre wing position. It's going to be an awkward bounce for whoever chases it. It was Evans to keep it into play, getting it across towards Christo. But the ball's over the line and out of bounds to John Christo. Sandringham uh, flying home there, 10 goals for a Brunswick 5-4, and Sandringham uh, seemingly heading for a big win. Heard again beating Anderson, pushing it towards the line at centre wing, and again it's over the line. 23 and a half minutes into the term. On the Olympic tyre scoreboard, Port 6-10-46, and Preston a very accurate 7 goals, 42 points. True centre wing position, play that one to Heard. It went down to Greg Marshall, who was immediately swamped and besieged by everybody else. Anderson, typical handball towards Anderson, who hasn't fired yet. Bucks defending well for Preston. Across their half-back line, beating the tackle of Kavanagh. Anderson coming in to pop onto the left foot, and his kick is going to be a straight and over the line and out of bounds. 24 minutes into the term, and it's seven goals, Preston, 6-10, Port Melbourne. Good, Bill, and we're coming up to the uh, time-on period, awaiting the throw-in to take place, but there's Camberwell 14-7, Waverley 7-5, so Camberwell still holding a very handy lead. O'Reilly went up in the ruck to get the knockout, O'Bayer came down to the ground, coming around them is Bryce, Bryce high in the air with his kick, no mark taken, and this is Bucks who's in everything at the present time, he's been in a lot of the play, but Davies coming across to take the mark on the uh, half-forward line for the Port Melbourne side. Davies... Getting ready, goes for the kick up towards the centre forward zone. Up they fly, comes off the hands of the players to Bolger. Bolger goes straight to the boundary line on the fall. So it'll be a free kick Port Melbourne's way. Rob. Margin four points and the uh, crowd loving this game here. Ball there on the, that's McGaw going off. Jim Christo lining up the big sticks now. Lorenzini is on. There's the kick by Christo going in towards the sticks. The umpire moves across and it's one behind. That's uh, very inaccurate kicking by Port Melbourne. Six goals, 11 now. 47. And the Olympic tyre scoreboard to seven straight goals, 42. They've kicked uh, 3 7 for the quarter. Now it's uh, Kavanagh going forward for Port Melbourne. Big kick by Kavanagh, right in towards the goal, and it's uh, offline again, and another behind. What were those statistics again, Ian? Port Melbourne have kicked a total of three goals, eight in the second quarter. Preston, one straight goal. So the difference is one straight kick now, six points the difference. The Olympic tyre scoreboard. Preston, seven straight goals. Port Melbourne, six goals, 12, 48. Waiting for the ball to come back into play. We've now moved on to time on by a minute and a half just a reminder we'll have all the details for you and the important uh, final ladder in first division plus the action highlights of this big game and eyewitness news tonight with Tony Banks Swan it is takes the ball back towards uh, full forward Fred Cook is there from behind and I think he might have got the mark yes the nod from the umpire and Fred Cook how many uh, what's the statistics as regards Cook Ian he's kicked four goals one and all of the three goals Port Melbourne have kicked this quarter have been kicked by Fred Cook so a very valuable player today is Fred Cook. Certainly on fire. Back to his brilliant best. And uh, I would say we're looking forward to a great final series from Fred Cook. <laughs> Fred Cook now moving in. Picture of concentration. Could be five. Yes, says the umpire. Five goals to Fred Cook. The bounce has taken. It's wide of the centre at the moment. Glenn Evans going over the top of the ball for Port Melbourne. Scooped away from him to uh, Anderson. Anderson up towards their half-forward line. But coming in is Eaton in defence. Can't get rid of the ball. Anderson picks it up again. Shoots it up towards full forward. Bulger tried to take the mark. Backed into the uh, pack rather solidly there. Goss is the player with it on the ground. But the umpire will come in for a ball up. 28 and a half minutes into the second term. Port Melbourne leading by two goals at the moment. Going wide of the pack, Warren. Getting rid of it now with a hand pass to Marks. Marks using that extra yard. Shoots it up towards the uh, wing. And Marshall, Greg Marshall, is the player to go up, but it's come off his hands and out. 
and a good game so far. Both sides putting everything into it. Lorenzini and Anderson shoulder to shoulder, and Anderson a bit too experienced for Lorenzini gets the free kick. So Lorenzini making his presence felt when he comes on the ground, but not the right way from uh, Preston's point of view. As Anderson now bangs it towards centre forward. There's Bob Hurd uh, getting his kick back towards that same position on the wing. Going up was Christo. Down goes Marks. The umpire's calling play on, however. As it comes out of the pack towards Jim and Christo. Christo going downfield. Shoots the goal. It's another one up to They go on to a three-goal lead. Eight goals, 12. Gee, I wonder who that was in the crowd for a moment. Eight goals, uh, 12, Port Melbourne. And Preston, seven goals straight. Don't forget the uh, Gillette VFA Mark of the Year will win $1,000 for a VFA player. And a Sunday Observer reader can also win $1,000 by correctly picking what the judges will select as the Gillette VFA Mark of the Year. Next Sunday on Channel 10, we'll show you the six Marks of the Year finalists during the first semi-final of the VFA Final Series. The six leading marks will be repeated the following Sunday during the televised second semi-final. And there's a kick now going up towards Fred Crook again at full forward. He can't take the ball. Player being held down there is uh, Cosma. And Cosma using a bit of dash now. Shoots it around the wing on the other side of the ground. Marks in open territory. Is able to take one bounce. Then a hand pass across to his teammate in Warren. Warren coming down from the half forward flank. Gets the uh, lead from Hallis up at full forward. Punched away from him. But he gets it around the neck at the same time. And Hallis, I thought Hallis backed into that uh, free tap. Well, he may have backed in, but to note about the player, the opponent had the hand right on the back there of Hallis, so there was, uh, it was quite a, quite a clear-cut free kick, Phil. He's kicked four goals so far in the total of seven straight kicked by Preston. Preston has stayed in the game by their accuracy, and there's the eighth goal up to Preston. It takes them to eight goals straight, and Port Melbourne, eight goals, 12. The inaccuracy of uh, Port Melbourne has uh, been something that's stopped them from getting a pretty good lead here, Bill Jacobs. Well, Ian Gibbs will give us the statistics, uh, number of possessions and kicks and marks, etc. shortly, uh, but the score of eight goals, 12 to eight goals, is sufficient indication of the superiority of Port Melbourne, with the exception of the fact that they haven't been able to complete with the accuracy of Preston, which has kept that team in the game. Port Melbourne uh, can thank themselves, can thank their inaccuracy for not going at a half time with a comfortable lead. But it has been an attractive game. It did lift in that quarter, and one can only hope that the third quarter will be productive insofar as Preston is concerned for the rest of the game. Uh, but at this stage of the journey, I see no reason to change my opinion, and I think Port Melbourne will win and win well. Right, Bill. Ted Henrys. Well, that was a good quarter of football by Port Melbourne, Phil. They certainly lifted from their uh, first quarter's performance. But I thought the three main players in the game, or four I could include another player, but Swan in the centre, O'Reilly at centre half forward, Fred Cook at full forward, and Vic Anderson. He seemed to take control where Hurd had been in charge of the ruck and those duels early in the game. It seems that now Vic Anderson took over in that second quarter. And those four players, I felt, were instrumental in the performance of Port Melbourne in that quarter. A good game of football, a very entertaining game of football, Phil. And I wouldn't give either. I wouldn't forecast that either side will win this game at this particular side. Port playing well at the moment, but Preston definitely likely to come back. Yes, uh, they're playing well both sides, but uh, Preston are in their fighting tent. They're, then they're forcing Port Melbourne into a lot of errors on their forward line, and that's why the inaccuracy. But I'd probably like to see uh, Preston put uh, Cooper into the centre and make him Marshall out onto the uh, flank, keeping in mind that Marshall is coming back after 15 weeks out. And Swan is playing so very well in the centre. Cooper's played in the centre quite a bit this year, and I think he might make a difference. They need someone to tag uh, Swan, I think, try and yeah. take him out and of the Cooper's game. Cooper's a strong player to do that. Ian, the statistics on the game. Port Melbourne dominated that second quarter. They had 13 scoring shots to Preston's two, but unfortunately, through an inaccuracy, they could only manage five goals eight, Preston two straight goals. Port Melbourne kick getters. Swan, the biggest kick getter on the ground, with 17 kicks. Kavanagh, 14. Bradbury, 7. And Goss coming into the game in that second quarter with 9 kicks. Preston kick getters. Mark's playing well with 13. Mark on 10. Bucks, 10. And Cooper, 8. Goal kickers for Port Melbourne. 5 to Cook. 4 coming from that quarter. 1 each to O'Reilly and Wilkinson. And for Preston, 5 to Hallis. 2 to Marks. And 1 each to McGaw and Jim Christo. Actually, when we were finishing the Dandy Dollar Dash, I saw Fred uh, not moving too well out here. What's the trouble, Freddie? Well, I tried to take a mark in the forward pocket, Rob, and when I, I got up pretty high, which doesn't happen very often with me, but I, when I corrected my balance, I've torn my groin. My Is it groin. really bad, Fred? It's pretty bad. I've just had uh, 
some painkillers and hopefully uh, we've worked out a plan that I don't have to run all that much in the goal square. We're, right. I can have the, the Rovers in Kavanaugh and Christo at my feet if the ball's punched away. But uh, it's a pretty important game under normal circumstance. I suppose I should should come off. But, uh, you know, we've got to win this because we need that psychological advantage right. going playing Preston in the next two weeks. And uh, the way things were going early, we're, we're, we're in all sorts of bother. But now hopefully we've got our game together. We're applying pressure, particularly in that last quarter. And What's that breeze worth? I think it's worth three or four goals. I didn't really? notice it in the first quarter simply because uh, we were protected by the grandstands. Right. But getting down the other end, it's worth three or four goals to either side. Righto, Fred. Well, uh, thanks for your latest information about that groin injury, but uh, it won't worry you uh, for the second semi, though, will it? No, I don't think so. I've right. had it before, and okay. I usually, it only takes a week to get over it. Righto, Fred. Right. Thank you very much. Right, OK, well, there it is, Phil. Good line for Preston, but being marked in defence. Uh, by Christo. All right, Ian, statistics on the game for this stage. They're basically reflective of the score in that Port Melbourne have had more possessions, 153, Preston 137. Kicks, Port Melbourne 117, Preston 97. Free kicks, Preston have had the favour of the umpire with 25 free kicks, Port Melbourne 20. Hand passes, Port Melbourne 36 and Preston 40. OK, and it's Port Melbourne into attack, up towards Cook, who rose up then. He's paid the mark. Well, Cook pushed it down then into the uh, hands of uh, the Preston player in Bulger. Anyway, it comes out towards Greg Marshall on the half-back line, and Marshall has taken that mark. So he plays it around the outer wing. And this is McGaw back on the ground trying to break away. Punches it away, but the umpire says that uh, he threw it, and the free kick will be taken here by Bradbury. So Bradbury from the centre now as he moves across in that area, but Hurd is coming in to try and punch it away uh, from O'Reilly, picked up by uh, Marks, but he's put it straight into the hands of Anderson. Anderson of Port Melbourne now, with his kick up towards the centre forward zone. Cook coming in from behind, punched away from him, goes to Eaton, Eaton out to Marks, Marks a lot and hand pass to Priest. Priest now from the uh, half back line around the wing, looking for Mark on. He couldn't quite get there, but he's got the ball now, gets grabbed, held, and he'll get the free kick. Mark on from right in front of the Norman Goss stand there. As we come up to the two-minute mark, McGaw goes for it, Marshall gets it. Uh, that's uh, Greg Marshall towards his brother, Peter Marshall, who in turn goes over the top of it, the umpire blowing the whistle for a ball out. Now he's given a free kick. I don't know what he gave that for, but Bradbury's got it. He looks for Annanson. Annanson stretches the long arm up to pull in the mark. Annanson from wide to the centre now with a hand pass in towards Anderson. Anderson coming downfield, goes for that long kick. Cook's in good position to take this one. Goes up, tried to mark it, couldn't do so. Jim Christo dribbles it away. Look at them go over the top of it and they end up a ball up, I'd say. The umpire's calling play on as it goes out towards uh, Christo again. And it does end up a ball up. A little bit of a struggle on the ground there. Reminds a bit of the old West Melbourne days. Well, Christo expected a free kick out of that, but the umpire's coming in for a ball up. He bounces it out towards the boundary line, and they're trying to get through as Kavanagh, who's slung to the ground, and it's out of bounds. Well, while it's out of bounds, let's talk about the Best Player Award today. The Best Player will receive these Seedle products with $50 in cash. Also, the um, Puma is through here to... Goss, Goss shoots for goal offline and through for one behind. But we would like to mention the uh, Gillette Mark of the Day. The uh, Mark of the Day will receive $50 in cash in the Gillette products. And the Gillette VFA Mark of the Year will win $1,000 for a VFA player. And a Sunday Observer reader can also win $1,000 by correctly picking what the judges will select as the Gillette VFA Mark of the Year. All details are next Sunday's Observer and we'll be putting them over there with the six top marks of the year for you to be able to select your mark of the year. Now it's a free to Heard. Heard from the halfback line towards centre wing on the stand side of the ground and it's Priest taking the mark. So Priest now to put it into attack for Preston. Preston need a goal at this stage to keep the real interest in the game and McGaw is not good on the ground but can take that good mark. Takes a timely one on that occasion. So McGaw now across uh, towards the uh, centre forward zone. No one able to take the mark. Johnson trying to get away with it. And it'll be a free kick to Preston. He's giving it as holding the ball by the look of it. And the free kick will be taken by White. Well, White's well within scoring range, only about 35 metres out from goal. This will be his first shot. They've kicked eight goals straight. And that accuracy has kept them uh, within scoring range of Port Melbourne. 
Let's see how accurate he is this time. He's put it on its way and it's through for another goal. So Port Melbourne go on to nine straight. To see him there. Now that's a press 54 and Port Melbourne 8 13, 61. Bill Jacobs. Well, Preston struggling and they're going to get it out of the centre again. And this time a free kick will be awarded to Greg Marshall. There he is, number 29, Port 813 to Preston. Nine goals, a seven point advantage. McGaw high as usual. And Anderson just strolling away there without any pressure at all. Ambling away might be a better expression. And he's looking for Swan. Too far for him. Give a chance for Greg Marshall. Swan in hot pursuit. In there also is Anderson. And eventually it'll be Priest coming out of the pack. Some players certainly letting play go on, which is either good or bad, whichever way you look at it. Bucks out for Marks, who's played very well. Marks onto the left foot, up towards the centre of the ground. Greg Marshall to Peter Marshall. Not intentional, but Peter Marshall's kick. Over there towards Hallis, and he... Hallis was responsible for Preston's first point by just pushing it through in strong opposition to Thompson. So it's Preston on the Olympic tyre scoreboard, 9-1-55. But they're six points behind Port Melbourne, who have registered 8-13. Wilkinson out to Roy Jannison, knocked away. A chance for Marks over around the ball, allowing Christo to come in. That's John Christo. Long handball to Anderson, who will handball. You can back that into Anderson. Anderson to the half-back flank. The luxury of a couple of bounces before disposing of it to the centre of the ground to Jim Christo. Jim Christo in the gluey part of the ground, the only gluey part of the ground, really. And Port Melbourne surging into attack, aided by a 15-metre penalty against Priest. Jim Christo is now at centre-half forward, looking for Cook to come from behind. Cook sandwiched out of it. Play on from Bolger to Eaton, and Preston out of trouble, temporarily at least, across to their half-back line. Over there is Brine. Play on is the call. Interesting tackle. Still play on, allowing Cooper to come in. Back to Brian, but intercepted there by Davies. Davies pushing it across the line. Geelong West 6-7, Paran 9-7. Paran still holding on to that very valuable lead in the valuable game. Coburg leading Dandenong. And Preston going into attack here, as we notice that Sandringham has a distinct advantage over Brunch. At centre wing. At centre wing for Port. Frankston and Caulfield, Caulfield 11-6 to 9-7, Port into attack up the centre-half forward, down very quickly to a Bayer on the ground, he Bayer to Jim Christo in the forward pocket, Goss calling for it, Christo hanging on to it, and tackle too high, a little bit lucky here, Jimmy Christo, might have got the ball across to Goss, and I think some of the Port players sense the same thing, Jimmy Christo has kicked one goal one, it's well out in the forward pocket. This won't make the distance. Cook being hustled and bustled. O'Reilly. And it'll be a bounce. Olympic tyre scoreboard. Port Melbourne 8-13. Preston 9-1. A difference of six points in Port Melbourne's favour. And there it is right in the goal base for Port Melbourne. At the eight and a half minute mark. And uh, every minute precious for Preston. Heard looking to thump it away to Bolger to Marks. was good defensive football. Further afield to Bryan. And again to uh, Eaton. Bolger getting it up to the centre of the ground. McGaw taps it. So too does Evans. Anderson Shepherd's well. And this will allow Bradbury to come through. Bradbury to Swan is good football. Swan at half forward, linking it up. Cook will Shepherd or fly. It's knocked through for a point, and that's 8 14 62 Port Melbourne. 9 1 55 Preston. And a pretty tough spirited game, and that's the score. Olympic tyres scoreboard, eight minutes into the third stanza. Going away now is Cosmer. Cosmer out of the back pocket, up to the centre of the ground, and sitting back nicely is Priest. Priest with Annanson standing the mark. Priest looking for lead. He'll get it out there from White. Prefers to kick in towards the centre half forward spot, down to the ground to Davies. Davies of Port Melbourne over towards the boundary line, and Bryce will eventually see it over the line and out of bounds to be thrown in. Nine minutes into the term. Olympic tyres scoreboard, 8-14 to 9-1. Port a seven-point advantage. Geelong, Western, Paran there again. 13 points in favour of Paran. But this time the free kick is to Annanson of Port Melbourne. And Annanson drives across towards the centre of the ground where Anderson takes it under control. Driving up towards Cook, but Cook I think is in trouble. Knocked away by Warren. O'Reilly backing up down at the centre-half forward spot. And it's everybody's ball and a bounce. 
Bill, I think Fred Cook may be going off the ground. I see Bruce Davis warming up on the bench there, and the runner went over to Cook, so I wouldn't be surprised if Cook does go off the ground. Well, if he's in real pain, he'd, he'd be better off for Port Melbourne and himself, I think. Kavanagh backing up there after the bounce, and Kavanagh gets it across to Bradbury, missing it on the run through. McGaw to Marshall, and holding the ball against McGaw was pretty quick. There's Bradbury, number 16, the recipient of the free kick. Bradbury driving long. Cook still on the ground at the moment, contesting the mark. Down into the base of the pack, a chance for Ibeya. Ibeya pushes along. Goss in there too. And the umpire said it's holding the man. And Goss will get the free kick. Now this is a very important one for Port Melbourne. 11 minutes into the term. Because they're leading by seven points. Preston have the aid of the breeze. And another goal to Port at this stage would make things decidedly difficult uh, for Preston. Goss. Number 11 of Port Melbourne. The ball swinging through for a goal for Port. There's Fred Cook leaving the field. I think a wise decision, Teddy. A very wise decision, Bill. It was obvious at half time that he was suffering pain. Right, now to Rob Asper. Right, that's John Christo down there defending. It gets it across to Evans. Evans accepts the pass. There's his kick. It's on the outer side of the ground in front of our broadcast box. Whack there by Swan. Gives the chance now for Anderson to go forward. There's his kick across towards centre half forward. O'Reilly sets himself. Knocked away by Warren. Down to the ground. Kavanagh comes through. Wheezy way past the opponent. Adds his left foot kick. Screws it back along the ground towards the goal mark. That's uh, Davis grabbing the ball. Play on, says the umpire. Bucks comes out now. Handball there to Hurd. Hurd in turn will handball across to his uh, teammate Eaton in a lot of trouble there, but it's Hurd who gets them out of the trouble. Only for a moment, though. Almost a mark. In fact, he's made the free kick. The free kick there to Christo. Christo immediately plays on. Down towards the forward pocket, and the player all by himself is Grant O'Reilly. O'Reilly marking in the left forward pocket for Port Melbourne. He's already kicked 1 1. Port Melbourne kicking against the breeze, so this is an important goal for the borough. Of course, Fred Cook off the ground now with that uh, injury that we spoke about at half time. Grant O'Reilly, one of the uh, key players in Port Melbourne side. There's the kick by O'Reilly. Umpire doesn't have to move at all. Four points to Port Melbourne. Tire scoreboard 55. That's a 19 point margin for Port Melbourne. There's the bounce. Coming a handball there, but it's a grab by Hurd. He's been a good player for Preston. Kicks the ball high to the right forward uh, flank position. Grabbed there by White. In towards goal. Mark on it was, and the umpire says four points. A goal to Preston. It was Mark. There's the bounce by umpire for two. It's uh, Annanson getting the ball down. The buyer is there on his hands and knees. Pack develops on top, and uh, the ball has comes out now. It's Bucks going through, knocking along in front of him. Drops the ball like a hot potato there. Oh, gee, try and pick it. Kip, uh, Cooper it is who kicks, kicks the ball out. Down towards centre-half forward. The sun must be in the player's eyes there now. Pallas grabs the ball. Back towards goal. Offline, way offline. Over the line and out of bounds. Right, to Bill Barrett at Turak Park. What's happening there, Bill? Uh, Camwell away was still, still pretty close, Phil, but the scores show bit of a difference in the game. The Camwell handball and Evan Camwell 112 779. Right, I built. That was Hallis who uh, kicked it behind, increased the uh, score for Preston while we we're across there at Turak Park. So the Olympic tyre scoreboard now has Preston 10 goals 2 to uh, 10 goals 14, that is 74 to Preston, 10 goals to 62. Port Melbourne leading Preston. Well, the ball is in front of the uh, parochial grandstand, the Port Melbourne stand out there, the Norman Goss stand, but it's Warren coming through to the dismay of the Port Melbourne fans. A big hoof right down towards the, uh, oh, good mark there in defence to Gary Bryce. He decides to uh, handball. Bradbury it is, but he's mad, he can't grab it. Marcon picks the ball up, he won't muck round. There's his kick in towards the full forward position, and who is there? The lone defender, big Vic Annanson. Well, the Sun is in a very difficult position uh, for players at the left of your screen now, looking uh, to the other end of the ground. Drop kick by Anderson. You don't see those too often. Football today. Cooper it is, leading in the race for the ball. He's knocked down, and the umpire said, you'll push, take the kick. Brett Cooper, the vice captain, gets a lead further down the ground, but uh, decides to ignore that. Kicks the ball right down into the teeth of goal. Big Vic Anderson is uh, there defending. Bryce also, McCaw is leading for Preston. Looks like 
and the gore has been uh, penalized and will be taken by Gary Bryce. Short pass by Gary Bryce into Annanson. And Little Marshall, one of the smallest men on the ground, tries to get up and knock it away from Vic Annanson. As you can see, Annanson guarding his eyes there from the sun. Decides to direct play to the other side of the ground. Davies almost takes the mark. They're under pressure from Cooper and he won't give up, that's for sure, but uh, gives a free kick away. No, the 15 metre penalty won't apply, uh, apply which is a bit of a surprise. Davies now kicks the ball down towards the uh, broadcast box side of the ground. Coming through is Cosma. There's his kick to the uh, left forward flank position, but it's Bradbury defending there. Okay, Phil, see if you can talk uh, Preston into, into some goals. Righto, Robin. It comes up towards Port Melbourne's half forward line. Moving out here is Davis. Uh, Davis tried to get the kick in. It's gone close to the boundary line, but from Kavanaugh back to Anderson. Anderson shoots for goal, but he's put it out on the full. So the uh, free kick, probably uh, Cosma. Warren. It'll be. Where have they put Cosma, Ted? Cosma on the. He's actually in the back pocket, on resting on the, uh, oh, the here rovers. He is. He's not far away from that area, but it's Warren waiting for the ball to be returned. I think they'll call a new one on the ground. Let's check these scores again. We have Port Melbourne 10 14 74, Preston 10 2 62, and Bill Barrett. How's the score at Turak Park? And Warren now with his kick towards the centre of the ground. Come off the hands of the players here. And uh, through to Brian. Brian now gets a hand pass across to Greg Marshall. Greg Marshall to Bucks. Bucks streaking downfield can steady. And then go for the long kick. But it might be just enough offline to go through for the behind. So Preston go to 10-3. is against Port Melbourne's 10-14. Preston kicking behinds now. And uh, this will be Christo to take the kick off. John Christo. He gets it to Bryce, and Bryce only just behind, uh, near the behind post there, as he shoots it towards the uh, centre-half back position. That was a risky shot. Johnson gains possession. There's Anderson and Anderson waiting for it. Punched away, comes down to a Bayer. A Bayer now tackled, but will get the hand pass in across to Anderson. Now Anderson can run down the field, get the little short pass in to Kavanagh, who accepts it just slightly wide at centre-half forward and well within scoring range. A very happy lady there. With Frankston hitting the lead now, 100 is against Caulfield's 86. Kevin Ars kicked three behind so far. Goal umpire coming back, and it's a goal on the board to Port Melbourne. The bounce to take place again, and uh, still only 17 points in it. But it's at Port Melbourne, and Port Melbourne is the team leading at the moment. Punch wide. This will allow Swan to run in on the ball with Bradbury. Bradbury gets it off the ground but can't handle it. There's Swan picking it up now. And Swan up towards the half-forward line. It comes through in the direction of Davis. Davis couldn't uh, get it away. or oh, a dribble there. It could have been a kicking in danger, but the umpire's called play on. They're going down hard, and the umpire says it's out of bounds for the throw-in. And the coburg Dandenong score, 30 points up, is uh, Coburg. We'd like to see that uh, Perangelong West score uh, as soon as possible, with also the Sandringham score. Be very interesting to have those. Just out in front of the scoring end uh, for uh, Port Melbourne, about 20 metres out. As we have the Ruckman, it's set for it. Heard marks it on the uh, bounce and then punches it right upfield. But his little men are not doing all that well. It's punched away here by Eaton. Comes through towards Markon. Markon now on the hands and knees trying to get out. He gets grabbed and he'll get the free kick. He had to get grabbed. He's so low to the ground. He could have got up and run between all players' legs and got away with it. So Markon. But he's kicked down towards Annanson, though. It's uh, off Annanson's hands. Bradbury is the player to trap the ball. And with those long strides, we'll get it to Jim Christo. Christo with his kick centre half forward with O'Reilly going up in the middle of two Preston players heard gets the hands out oh, this, to the crowd because it was touched there's no doubt about that and heard from centre half back now plays it out towards the wing on the stand side of the ground they go up he was looking for Cooper Cooper's a player in front he's got a lot of strength Cooper but that didn't allow him to get through he was grabbed but too high and he'll get the three now Cooper can see players downfield on the half forward line and it's Priest by the look of it to take them up. So Priest on the half forward line, a long way out from goal. The wind has sprung up again, which will 
help the ball get up to the forward zone, but the mark has been taken by Thompson in the last line of defence. Thompson across to Anderson. Anderson, not a player within 15 metres of him, plays it towards Jim Christo, but coming in there to assist is Johnson. Johnson high in the air, looking for Goss. He'll wait for the bounce, and right behind him is Eaton. He has the kick smothered, and this is uh, Bucks getting a lift to go on with. Gets grabbed a bit high, says the umpire, and Bucks gets the free kick. He put himself nicely into that position for the free kick. Bill. A lot have done that today, Ted. Goes up towards that centre-half forward uh, position, and it's Bryce judging the flight of the ball so well. He doesn't get a good kick in, it's smothered, and Johnson is winding up to uh, dive on the ball. He's looking for uh, Swan out here on the stand wing. Swan plays it further around for O'Reilly, but it might be out on the full. Yes, it is. And the free kick will be taken by Warren. So Warren, a cross field towards Marks, and Marks short of the centre will get the kick. He plays it high in the air, and who's down here but big Vic Amundsen to go up? Can't take the mark, but gets it down to Bradbury. So Bradbury from centre-half back. Across here towards Paul Goss. Goss is bumped out of position. There's Kavanagh moving in, but he's being tackled by Cosma. Cosma doing well. They get a little shove from Goss to help him over the line with also the ball. Port Melbourne 11, 14, 80, and Preston 10, 3, 63. There it's forced down to ground and moving in is Jim Christo. Christo gets tackled, it's Eaton coming in on the ball, snapped away beautifully by Evans. Evans comes downfield to put it up towards the forward zone. There's Davis reaching high, jumping up, the umpire's paid it. Good mark by Davis at Port Melbourne. Well, what do you think for a Gillette mark of the day over that one, Ted? Well, that was a pretty good one, but uh, that one at McCaws in the first quarter was a beauty too, Phil. Yes, it was a ripper. Uh, you tend to forget them when they were so far away. So, Bill Jacobs. Well, I think Preston are shot. Port have done too well in this quarter into the breeze for Preston to get into the act. And here's Davies kicking another goal for Port Melbourne. We're only a minute away from the time on period uh, in the third quarter and Port Melbourne have a handsome lead of 23 points. That was Marks getting it out of the centre and looking for McGaw, who let him down. John Christo coming up strongly. Christo from the half-back flank delivers to centre wing. And the leading in the race for the ball was Warren, but it's over the line on the floor. Warren of Preston will take the free kick from centre wing, driving long toward line, some pushing and shoving going on, but Brian has the mark. Brian has the mark at half forward flank for Preston, trailing by 23 points at the 24 and a half minute mark. Into the goal square, and that's a mark, two marks. No pun intended. So as we hit the button into the time on period, Ken Marks has a chance to kick his third goal. Preston score 10-3, Port Melbourne score is 12-14 on your Olympic tyres scoreboard. Ken Marks comes around a little bit, play on as the call, and it's another goal to Preston. Port Melbourne have produced 12-14, 14 to Preston have produced 11-3, and that's Anderson out of the centre, looking for Davies, and Davies will mark it. Just so easy, thank you very much. Preston in more strife than the proverbial early settlers. There's your time clock. We're into time on. And Davies lining them up directly in front. And bang, it's another goal. That's Port Melbourne 13-14. Preston 11-3. On the Olympic tyre scoreboards, that's 92 to 69, maintaining a lead of 23 points. Well, no doubt about it, Bill. Bruce Davis has been a very good replacement for Fred Cook since Cook had to leave the ground with that uh, groin injury, which obviously has been playing up with him. Uh, Davis has come onto the ground. He's kicked two goals and an able replacement for uh, the champion at that full forward position. And a good standby to him when the finals come along. And here we see uh, Paran leading Geelong West by eight points at three-quarter time. We saw Davies uh, kick goals earlier on this season, Ted Davis. Davis and Davies. Davies number 12. Davis number 10. Well, it's 12-14, uh, 13-14 to 11-3. Olympic tyres scoreboard. And uh, now over to Rob Asprey. Three minutes of time on. We've played. 17 uh, point is the margin at the moment. Port Melbourne leading Preston and uh, Port Melbourne kicking with the advantage of the breeze. So uh, Preston will, or Preston kicking with the advantage of the breeze. They'll certainly want to do something in the uh, closing moments of this quarter. Warren gets a handball, picked up by Goss. Short pass there to uh, his teammate in Swan. He, his kick is smothered. It's a bayer coming through. He can't get control of the ball. Bowls are on his knees. Handballs to Eaton. Another one to Marks. Ken Marks has a paddock. Picks it up now. Has a little bit of a look. 
Gets a lead down the ground. It's McGaw leading out. But uh, his uh, opponent in front there is Bradbury. Pack develops. Ball comes out now. Bramley it is. Gets across to Eaton. Eaton's handball is smothered. And uh, smothered there by Johnson. Over the line. And the throw-in will result. Moving up to the four-minute mark of time on in the third quarter. Just a reminder, all the details, the important... Uh, Final four details of VFA First Division on Eyewitness News tonight with Tony Banks. That's at six o'clock. Don't miss it. Close to the boundary line. Umpire's got his eye right on it there. Picked up by Evans. Screws it back over his shoulder. Bucks tries to uh, mark it overhead. Bolger kicks it in towards the centre of the ground, and it's Greg Marshall who takes it. Marshall immediately plays on. Down towards the right forward pocket. Big pack of players goes up. It's Hallis who comes out with the ball. Well, I thought he uh, got a mark there, but the umpire has found a a free kick. What did you think about that mark, Ted? Well, I didn't think he held it long enough. It was a very good attempt by Hallis, but I think the umpire would have required that he held it a little bit longer than Rob. Right, the ball coming now to Johnson on the... Anderson, it is, on the uh, left. Goss, across to Goss, the right halfback flank position. Oh, going up high was O'Reilly. Couldn't take it. Cut, recovers beautifully uh, into Davis now. Davis knocks the ball along in front of him, struggling there as he goes through the mud, slips over, and uh, grabbed. The ball was... Uh, held to him according to the umpire and it'll be bounced in the right forward pocket position for Port Melbourne kicking to the right of your screen nice bounce ball knocked down Abaya has the chance runs round his opponent there back towards goal and it's through for a goal to Port Melbourne Tony Clean Porto 98 Preston 11-3-69 that uh, 99 30. So it's 29 ball. points of difference, Rob. Right? Yeah, well, I wasn't that good at maths, Phil, but I won't argue. There's the uh, 69 plays, 98. Let's stick at that. The ball on the outer side of the ground. It's uh, Gary Bryce, who would be uh, pretty pleased with the situation at the moment. Johnston, it is, gets his kick. He's coming, uh, directing play right across the uh, centre of the ground. Now on the outer side of the ground, Swan kicks the ball high. It's going to be close to the boundary line. Bounces over the line and out of bounds. We've played now five and a half minutes of time on, approaching the three-quarter time break. Of course, Port Melbourne will be coming home with the breeze and it'll be a valiant effort by uh, Preston if they're going to get up from this uh, situation at the moment. They've kicked very accurately today. 11-3 so, uh, so far. That's Bulger. Grabbed by Priest. Stretching mark there. Didn't get a lead. Kicks it down. And a good mark to Brian, making position there. Brian decides to uh, direct play right across to Warren. Warren all by himself, but the siren will beat him, and Warren uh, uh, shows his disgust by thumping the ball. So it's three-quarter time, and the uh, Olympic tyre scoreboard has Port Melbourne 14-14-98 to Preston 11-3-69. Good quarter then for uh, Port Melbourne, Bill Jacobs. Great quarter for Port Melbourne. They proved their superiority in all departments of the game, and they attacked for most of the quarter into the face of a breeze. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, Preston have got no chance. But there's 30 minutes of, the, of time to prove me wrong. But Port, a very adept side at uh, using conditions to their own advantage. They kept the ball low for most of the time coming into the breeze. And Preston, I felt, pr pressed the panic button at about the halfway mark of that quarter. Port outscored them, outthought them, outplayed them and thoroughly deserved their lead. Ted, what do you think happened to uh, Preston? Well, I, I felt that Preston were hit by a bit of a bombshell uh, early in that... Uh, a quarter, I felt that uh, Port Melbourne just started to take over all around the ground, uh, Phil. Uh, they've been winning well at centre half ball with Grant O'Reilly. Warren has been generally a very good player with the Preston team. He's getting uh, thrashed in that position, plus in many other positions. Port are winning practically all over the field, Phil, and uh, they certainly demonstrated in that third quarter that they deserve to be on top of the ladder. And with Fred Cook going off the ground, of course, Davis is making it pretty lively around the forward line, keeping those backs well occupied. Ian, the statistics on the game. Good quarter from Port Melbourne in that quarter they kick six goals to Preston 3-3. Three, three. Port Melbourne kick getters Swan with 22 kicks, Anderson 18, Jim Christo 14, Kavanagh 16 and Bradbury a very strong defender with 14 kicks. Preston kick getters, Mark, he'd be their best player with 20 kicks, Mark on 15, Cooper 12 and Bucks, he's been a strong consistent backman all day with 12 kicks. <laughs> Goal kickers for Port Melbourne, 5 to Cook, 2 each to O'Reilly and Davis and for Preston, 5 to Hallis and 3 to Marks. Port Melbourne are 14-14-98, Preston 11-3-69 interest in the game over there at uh, Turak Park there as we have Port leading 14-14 to Preston's 11 goals 3 and uh, we have the Port Melbourne side still being addressed out there by uh, Gary Bryce at the uh, moment there's a few sailors down here too by the look of it 
I think they're over there with the girls on Blueberry Hill. Well, they've got the caps of the sailors. I don't know where the sailors are. But there have been a few of them around here today. Anyway, three-quarter time scores. Coburg 17-12. And now let's uh, check out sticks before the ball is bounced here, Ian. Statistically, Port Melbourne ran away with it in that third quarter. As you can see, they've had more of the play with 271 possessions to Preston 217. Kicks 193, Preston 151. Port Melbourne stronger in the air, a lot stronger in the air with 57 marks, Preston 38. Free kicks, Preston still has the favour of the umpire with 34 free kicks, Port Melbourne 31. Port Melbourne using the handball, 78, Preston 66. And we're just waiting for the goal umpire to move back into position there. And uh, we're underway for the uh, final quarter. Well, let's see if uh, Preston can come back. 98 to 69. Signal to the timekeepers. Dick Annanson up in the ruck with Big Bob Heard. There we go. And little Marx was forced to go up in the air. Marshall tried to break through with the ball. And that's Greg Marshall, as opposed to his uh, brother, uh, Peter Marshall, punched away by uh, the players then. And it's Christo coming around in defence. He gets it back towards Davies, who'll be tackled rather solidly, but it goes close to the boundary line and be scooped over by Johnson. Port Melbourne would be very confident at this stage into the coming into the final term. Annanson uh, shouldering Hurd as they both come into it. Take it away here by McGaw. McGaw tried to take it away, couldn't do so. Anderson uh, battling against Marks. Taps it on here towards Swan. Swan with Goss waiting for the hand pass. But he'll go for the short foot pass across to Bryce. And there's two players out there, Anderson and Bryce. To uh, go in for it. And uh, Bryce is the uh, player who took it. Bryce up towards the half forward line. There's O'Reilly going up in the air. And the players looking a bit lethargic, the uh, Preston players, as they came into it then. And that's Marshall, Greg Marshall, to his brother Peter Marshall. And now Marshall up towards centre half forward. Unable to uh, take the mark, the umpire will be forced to play the whistle for a ball out. So Heard now coming up with Anderson. And away they'll go. Heard getting the knockout, uh, goes towards uh, Marks, who tapped it back to the pack. And a thrown out really by Anderson then to Bradbury. Bradbury goes downfield, didn't get a good bounce, but then with a long kick. And this is a chance for O'Reilly, but no, it's a mark taken by Priest in defence for Preston. Priest with a long hand pass, gets it to uh, Bucks. Bucks back to Priest. And Priest is looking around here for Bob Hurd, who'll go close to the boundary line. He's taken the mark. So it'll be Bob Hurd. And uh, Preston having a tough job in trying to get it up on their forward line. Marks now with the ball. We'll get the short foot pass across towards Brian, who goes up in the air to take them up. At the arm held, and he's actually been awarded the free kick. He's very quick now to get it up to his teammate in Hallis. Hallis comes in to take the mark 20 metres out from goal, directly in front of the two and a half minute mark into the final quarter. They're well down. 98 plays 69 in Port Melbourne's favour. He's got the chance to uh, make it 75. He's kicked five goals so far, Hallis. So he's been pretty accurate. And the ball swings back with the breeze and it's gone through for goal to Preston. Selling. Preston need a quick goal to set them alight. It's Bucks taking the mark, or Priest taking the mark, just short of the uh, centre-half back position. He plays it out looking for Bulger. Bulger goes up to pull it in. He's uh, well uh, oh, attended there by Swan, and Swan getting the ball away to cheers from the Borough supporters towards centre-half forward, and it'll be another Preston mark to Priest. Priest has held up two forward thrusts, gets it out to Bulger again, a repeat of the last performance, but comes through to Eaton. Eaton coming downfield. We'll play it here towards Cooper, who couldn't come in to take the mark. This is Davies moving in now. And Davies coming around the half-back line. We'll get it up to his teammate in Kavanagh. Kavanagh couldn't mark it, but uh, had plenty of time to recover. To now go for the bounce and then go bang across towards centre forward. Look at Davies down there. Or Bryce. He looked a bit like Davis when he moved into the uh, ball, as a matter of fact, but it's uh, Bryce, Gary Bryce, the captain and coach of uh, Port. What a magnificent pass from Kavanagh, Phil. Yes, Kavanagh sighted it too very quickly, uh, sighted Bryce's move, and there's another goal up to Port Melbourne. 
15-14 to 12-3 Port Melbourne. We were just reflecting on that pass of Kavanagh. You wouldn't see better. It travelled about 35 metres and uh, it wouldn't have been two metres height from the ground, I don't think. That's uh, at centre bounce and Annanson winning in the ruck for most of the day. Gets it to Goss. Goss to the half-forward line. It's rather peculiar style of Warrens there. Out to Bucks and Bucks will take it away across the half-back flank. Over towards centre wing, but it's wide and wild and out of bounds. Five minutes into the last quarter. Camberwell racing away from Waverley now, 138 to 88. That's a 50-point difference. Heard taking it out of the centre, who out of the bounce to Marks as good handball. Mark shoots it across to Brian at centre wing, and uh, Preston launched themselves into attack and plunging forward and claiming the mark. I think the free kick was played. Might be Hallis out there. It is. It's Hallis on the half forward line. Standing the mark, Thompson. Hallis swings it up towards a full forward spot. All oh, high, they're all high, but down to the ground, picked up by Davies, and Davies saw the ball over the line and out of bounds. Campbell 22-12 to Waverley 13-10, 144-88 to in the game at Turak Park. Annanson not only got the head out, he's got the free kick, and the big fellow once again a dominant factor in Port Melbourne's success thus far. Annanson accurate with foot pass across to John Christo. And John Christo from half back flank to Bradbury, who's been a great player all day at the half back flank. Driving down to the half forward line. High was uh, Davies there. And Davis. And Marks takes it away for Preston, looking for Brian. Spoiled by Evans, coming across as Hallis, but taking it away again. That will be a free kick to Preston for holding the ball. And the free kick will go to Hallis. And Hallis is on the half forward line as we approach the six and a half minute mark. Shooting the hand pass across to Marshall. That is Greg Marshall and he kicks up towards the full forward spot. Dropping back there, Annanson. And uh, a free kick and it will go to Port Melbourne and be taken by Davies. Out of the square, across to Anderson, down into the back pocket. Three quarter time, uh, Sandringham and Brunswick looks like Sandringham are home. 18-13 uh, to 13-8 as Port Melbourne moved further upfield and Big Annanson getting up off the floor. Up towards the centre of the ground, down to Bucks and Bucks across to Warren, Warren to Bolger and Bolger through the centre of the ground up to centre half forward and there's no doubt about it, Evans said leave it and that's exactly what they did. Nothing much going on down at Geelong West uh, in the way of uh, margin, only a point the difference in favour of Paran. Evans comes away from the half-back flank to deliver over to the centre wing spot. And there's Gary Bryce, the captain and coach, taking the steadying mark. Bryce at centre wing. Over towards the half-forward line, and that's a mark to Port Norman. And it's Kavanagh. Kavanagh, a prolific kick-getter today. 19 kicks. And Kavanagh at the half-forward flank, kicking towards goal. And it's got plenty of distance, but... A little inaccurate for one point only, and that's 15-15 Port Melbourne and 12-3 Preston. Voting uh, for the uh, Liston Award will be next Wednesday night, and we'll be covering the uh, last few minutes of the voting at 9.30 live on Channel 10. Bill? Well, it's back up towards the centre of the ground, and it's a Preston mark to Hurd. Uh, Hurd has been uh, beaten by Anderson today, I would suggest. Gets it out towards centre wing. Again, it's Kavanagh coming up for his 20th kick. In towards the half forward flank to find Swan, who's run riot most of the day, and Swan in towards a full forward spot. O'Reilly in great control, Port Melbourne. This finger, uh, this fellow, has got real sticky fingers. One grab most of the time, O'Reilly. He's kicked two goals and he's plumb in front, a matter of 20 metres out as he commences his run in towards goal. Nine minutes into the term and seemingly wrapped up for Port Melbourne. Definitely, I would say, as a result of that goal to Port. So the Olympic ties for Port Melbourne, 16, 15, 111 to Preston, 12, 3, 75. And Preston need goals and they need them quickly. Maybe they've heard me. They're going forward now. There's a handball from Brian across to Warren. Warren's going to get caught as he handballs it. Does just in time. Ken Marks. Tackle the fumbles there at the crucial stage. Back to Brian. Brian scoops it back towards goal. Offline and through for one behind. 
Takes Preston on to 12 goals, 4, 76. Port Melbourne, 16, 15, 111. Margin of 35 points, a bit less than six goals. Don't forget, we have the Best Player Award still to come. Good wishes of Seidel and Puma. And also the Gillette Mark of the Day. And there's a few contenders for that. The Gillette Mark of the Day. Vic Allenson marking the ball there. And it looks like he could be hurt too. Ted, you saw exactly what happened there. He, he seemed to cop one on the side. Well, he seemed to fall right on his shoulder, the view I had. Um, and he's a pretty big fellow and plenty of weight, so he could have hurt that left shoulder. Yes, well, of course, the way things are going, he'll have... Uh, well, the way things will be, for sure. He'll have a uh, week to recover. There's the kick going to the grandstand side of the ground. Some of the eyes of the uh, players there. Abaya gets his kick in. Doesn't go anywhere in particular, but it goes to the right man. Kavanagh handballs across to Davis. Davis balks for a moment, then his kick goes in towards the goal umpire. Goal umpire has no hesitation in putting up two fingers. A goal to put Melbourne his third. 41 points, 17, 15, 117. Preston, 12 goals for 76. Preston now fighting back. They've left their run too late, though, but it's uh, Port Melbourne through Bradbury who'll defend. The handball's there. And the checkbooks are out here with the commentators, I believe me. The margin, 41 points, and the game's not even over yet. We've played 12 minutes into the final quarter. Now, where was Annanson? Is he still on the ground, or did he go off? Uh, yes, he is off the ground. There's a shot of Annanson. Looks like he's uh, having attention to his ankle. Down towards the centre-half forward position. Uh, just uh, short of the centre-half forward position, in fact. But the uh, kick here by O'Reilly will put it right down into the full forward spot. Right down into the teeth of goals. The pack set themselves. Up they go and in front. A very strong mark there. A very good mark under pressure to Davis. And Ian, some statistics. Interesting statistics on Davis. Davis came on to replace Cook and in that time he's had three kicks and kicked three straight goals. Lining up for his fourth goal now. Davis, oh, kicks it into the man on the mark. You wouldn't believe it. Well, what a shocking blue there. Mark on now for Preston. Takes possession of the ball. Goes for a bit of a run. Down to the wing position. Davies moves in. He can't take it. Coming through is uh, the captain, Marshall. Marshall gets a handball out. Mark on. Gets his kick in. Back. Oh, beautiful uh, lead there by Lorenzini, and he accepts the mark. Lorenzini kicks the ball high. Held up by the breeze. It's uh, freshening now, too. And that will certainly... Uh, Almost seal it for Port Melbourne with that breeze and uh, a bit of a knock there to Mark on, Phil. Bill Barrett, yes. Bill Barrett, a quick score from uh, the... Yeah, Bill, OK, Rob. Short pass to Marco by Mark on in towards Hallis. And Hallis accepts the mark. Hallis has kicked six goals, one. Been a great day for him. He's in the right forward pocket now. Would be about uh, 25 metres out from goal. You've got the angle there. Long shadows here as Hallis kicks right across the face of goal and through for yet another behind. Port Melbourne needed that one. The Olympic tyre scored, well, Preston, I should say, needed that one. Takes them on to 12 goals, 5, 77. There's the scoreboard, the Olympic tyre scoreboard. Port Melbourne, 17, 15, 117. Of course, these sides will meet in the uh, second semi-final. Wouldn't take any notice of today because Port Melbourne are very hard to beat on their home ground. Mark there. And Harold Martin not too happy about the today proceeding so far today. Good mark there taken by Thompson. Gets a lead, passes to Swan. Swan is brought to the ground and a bit of uh, frustration creeping into the game now as the pack develops. Altercation there, Swan taking his time and getting up. The 14-minute mark of the final term and a 15-metre penalty will result from that altercation. Very vocal Port Melbourne crowd in front of the uh, grandstand over there. Short pass to Goss all by himself. Goss goes back. Plenty of encouragement from the uh, Norman L. Goss stand. Long kick by Goss and uh, big man going up is heard and he brings the ball down. Decides to handball to Brian. Brian gets a lead and uh, eludes his uh, teammate there. Not close to the boundary. In fact, over the line and out of bounds. There's a player. Distressed, looks like Swan, and uh, that's a result of uh, that incident that happened before. Swan uh, certainly very distressed. That's a bayer in your picture, but uh, moving in as uh, two players fighting for the ball, Bulger and Davis. Umpire will call for it on the right forward flank for Port Melbourne. Too far out to score from there. 
Cooper moves in. He can't do anything with it. Knocked into the wide open spaces. Coming out now is Priest. Turns around. Almost had a uh, bounce, but decided to have a handball instead to Bolger going past. Bolger kicks the ball awkwardly in the right direction, though. Knocked down there. Good play. Moving in is uh, Goss. Oh, wow. A flash there. Goss and uh, Marshall. Swan now takes the ball. Sees Kavanagh all by himself down there on the right forward flank. Gets his kick in, going in towards goal in the forward pocket position, over the line, and out of bounds. Coburg, 23-13, 1.51. A big lead and a big win over Dandenong, 11-12-78. There's the throw in in the right forward pocket position for Port Melbourne. Look at him go in there. You'd think that uh, there wasn't a 41 margin in this game but uh, there's not much hope for Preston. No hope for Preston now. Frankston, 22-16, 148. Caulfield, 15-7, 97. And, of course, those scores are vital. Peran, Sandringham and Frankston vying for that vital fourth position and uh, third position on the VFA First Division ladder. That's Peran, Sandringham and Frankston. And, of course, tonight in Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock, we'll have the final VFA ladder for you. Phil. And percentage will decide that fourth position, Rob, as we have the uh, bounce of the ball. And it's uh, Wilkins who uh, gets possession of it, can't get away with it. And the pack pushing it along in front of them, and eventually it'll be uh, passed out by uh, Greg Marshall, but straight into the hands of Anderson. Anderson goes for the uh, goals, but no one able to take the mark down there. Bulger is the player to get it away to Priest. Priest across to Brian, and Brian now will look for marks. No, he swung the play in towards Big Bob Hurd in the centre, whose game has lifted uh, since Anderson has gone off the ground, uh, although uh, they've had a good battle through the day. It's Ben Evans who came in to uh, take the mark in defence for Port. He plays it back wide at the centre of the ground. Davis is up there to try and take the mark, failed to do so. Uh, but there's O'Reilly passing out to Wilkinson. Wilkinson uh, up towards the uh, left forward pocket of Christo, Jim Christo it is, who has come in to take the mark. At the 18 minute mark and uh, Harold Martin now working out what can happen in the second semi-final. And he's got a headache with the way that the Port players have been playing today. They're strong in every position and there's another goal up to Port Melbourne. Now he who is pushing into Big Bob Hurd, uh, Riley up in the rucks and Sandinson's gone off and Hurd gets the free kick. So Hurd now plays the ball towards the half forward line and will pay the mark out here to Hallis. Hallis has played well as a uh, full forward. He sends the play looking for his teammate in Daryl McGaw. McGaw's gained possession, grabbed pretty high, but the umpire says he'll allow it out of bounds to throw in to take place at the 19 and a half minute mark. So now Ruckman with Lorenzini trying to come in from behind Anderson, who is going up in the ruck then, and the umpire will be forced to ball it up again. And what have we got with the uh, scores here, Ted? Uh, we have Port Melbourne 17 15, leading Preston 12 5. Port Melbourne going away since half time. A shot for goal then. And that was Peter Marshall putting it through for full points to Preston. And uh, just let's check those scores. Port Melbourne 18 uh, 15, 123. Preston 13 5 83. Uh, there's no way known that uh, Preston can get out of this one at the 20 minute mark into or the Phil final Gibbs quarter. For that matter. I can't get out of it, I've got I've paid. <laughs> of course I uh, intended to go for Port Melbourne when I came here, but you fellas talked me out of it. <laughs> From that result, a very sweet result, I would say. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, moving in here is Thompson of uh, Port Melbourne. Couldn't get through the pack. The umpire blows the whistle and says it will be a ball up. We're waiting on a uh, Geelong West score and Peran score to come through. That's a vital score at the moment. As uh, we have the bounce, Heard uh, battling away and Heard uh, wins in the ruck there. There's an indication if Anderson uh, is out of this Port Melbourne side, they'll battle in the ruck particularly against a fellow like Hurd. That's Cooper now, up towards McGaw. McGaw leading in the race for the ball in front of Bradbury. And McGaw went, runs around opponents. Hand passes across to Mark on. Mark on lines them up, and it's another goal to uh, Preston to take them to 14-5.
ball has just been bounced in the centre here. There we have the scores with uh, Port getting it up towards their forward zone. Oh, and the umpire didn't allow the mark there. He didn't hold it uh, long enough. And let's see if Preston can get out of trouble this time. A free kick to Preston. Bull Barrett. What's the score at two at yellow? Yeah, like John Campbell. get better was in me. <laughs> uh, Jack Camberwell looks strong, uh, Bill. Oh yeah, they've played. They're, they're a side above Waverley. Not in the same competition. It looks like it today. Oh, we'll get to the talk about it in the summer right. at the finish as Preston are into attack now. And it's Brian who went for a hand pass. He should have taken a kick there. Only 15 metres out from goal, and it's a free port Melbourne kick. But Brian should have taken the kick. Anyway, it's a free to John Christo uh, down here, and Christo comes out now, Bill. John Christo to the uh, half-back line for Port Melbourne. Cooper carrying a leg injury a little bit, I thought, there. Got it across to Greg Marshall, to Marks. Clever of Basie football. Over to Eaton. Eaton can't break the tackle, and it's out of bounds. Olympic tyres scoreboard 18-15 to 14-5. A big win for Port Melbourne at home and uh, without the services of Fred Cook since just after half-time. O'Reilly being forced to do the ruck work with Annanson off the ground. In fact, Port, when you look around, not a very tall side without Cook and Annanson. But they're a very skillful side in association football. Preston's half-back line and Hurd wins it. Out there to Brian, intercepted by Ebaya, who chooses to kick off the ground across towards centre-half back for Port Melbourne. And Abaya does it again off the ground, breaking away from the tackle by Lorenzini up towards the centre-half forward spot, but Priest stands in the way for Preston. 23 minutes into the final term, and Priest to mark on as effective football. Mark on further afield, looking for McGaw in the front berth. Punched away by Bradbury, hand pass from one Marshall to the other, ending with Greg Marshall, and it's another goal to Preston. 24 minutes have gone in this the final quarter and there's the score 123 to 95 port leading and uh, going into attack looking for a lead up from Bryce the captain and getting it taps it back uh, to Jim Christo and uh, he dropped it like uh, the proverbial hot potato and the free kick will go to Preston and be taken by Eton. Eton to a lead from Marks. Marks going across towards the half back line. Didn't get the bounce it went to Anderson. Anderson dashes towards goal and puts it through for full points for Port Melbourne. Well into control, uh, Port Melbourne, as the uh, time clock moves towards time on. It's only about 35 seconds away. That's Eaton relieving the pressure for Preston and pushing it over the line, and it will be delivered back in by the boundary umpire. Olympic tyre scoreboard. Port Melbourne, a total of 123 points to 95 by Preston, uh, thus representing a 28-point lead to Port Melbourne at this stage as we now move into time on. Out of the pack. And taking it away, Kavanagh Swan who waltzes into an open goal and puts it through for what a point. Now it's a goal. 20 goals, 15, 1, 2, 9 as Port Melbourne's tally. And Preston, 15, 5, 95. And to uh, Bill Barrett over at Turak Park on the second division, second semi-final. Yes, 20 goals, 15, 1, 35 is the score to 15, 5, 95. And a very impressive win today by Port Melbourne. Perfect bounce back in the centre of the ground. A herd opposed to O'Reilly. No one can get the advantage there, but coming out with the ball. Geelong West has beaten Paran, Phil. Geelong West, we've just heard, have beaten Paran. And we'll have those scores for you in just a moment. So uh, that makes things very interesting because uh, those second and uh, uh, the third and fourth spots are certainly uh, far from decided. The game we should be looking at now will be the Frankston game. There's the Geelong West uh, result. 96 to 84. Ted Henry's on percentages now. We'll give you, uh, if we can, the Frankston uh, final score and also the Sandringham final score. Rob? Yes, that was uh, Marks being um, dealt with over there. In fact, the umpire has uh, decided to give the kick to Abaya. A short pass by Abaya. Gets a lead. The pack go up. No one can bring the ball down. Players throwing themselves on the ball. Coming out is Warren with it now. Warren goes around, decides to uh, handball. There's the kick now from Priest into Cooper. He'll handball to Bucks. Bucks is uh, content to handball to Marks. A long kick, I think, here would be uh, the thing that they'd be looking for. Ball going forward now, players setting themselves there, Lorenzini is there, but it's Port Melbourne who will defend, not uh, looking where to go, or not knowing where to go, the ball right in front of our broadcast box, and out of bounds. 
So it's Port Melbourne, 20 goals, 15, 135 to Preston, 15, 5, 95. We've now played three and a half minutes of time on. There's the throw in. Marshall, handballs to Marks. Oh, he runs into a lot of trouble there. Across the shoulder. And Ken Marks will take the free kick. Immediately plays on. And he's a contender for the uh, best player award today, which will decide very shortly. McGaw goes up. He can't bring the ball down. Ball comes out now. Markon tries to get his boot to it. He can't do so. Pack develops. Picked up by Hallis. Screws the ball across the face of goal. Oh, no. I was going to say out of bounds. Close to the boundary line as Abaya comes in. He'll prevent it from going out of bounds. Stops. Has a look. Puts it onto the ground. Short pass by Abaya into Evans. Evans uh, stalling for time. Good tactics here. Across to the uh, player in Anderson. Close to the boundary line. Kicked off the ground. Still in play, though, out there. Over the line now and out of bounds. Very strong uh, breeze now assisting Port Melbourne. Kicking to the left of your screen. The George Hannon and Sons end, actually. That big uh, removal truck down there. And a lot of viewers have phoned up saying, how come that uh, truck is always there? Well, it's to take the money home that Phil Gibbs has lost today. And uh, how come, uh, Rob, are you moving? <laughs> no, I'm not moving, Phil. <laughs> but there's a few people who haven't been moved up here today to see you select the wrong side and lose a bit of money at last. Well, there's Kavanaugh into the forward pocket. Kicks it back. Oh, beautiful play there as Spong makes position right in front of goal. And a 15-metre penalty will result. You've got to laugh at that one, the way he went down to the ground. He was just touched, Rob. Just touched, like you do, Phil. <laughs> and I must say that uh, I haven't had a bet on today's game, but there's a few people who have. Anyway, the ball back now with uh, Swan. Neither is Ted. No, that's right. There's the kick. Right through the goal. Another major goal to Port Melbourne. Well, with those comments, it just shows you how miserable some people are. <laughs> anyway, we have Port Melbourne, 21-15, 141, leading Preston, 15-5-95. And we're waiting on the uh, Frankston uh, score, the Frankston Caulfield score to come through, because it will now rest on percentages as to whether um, Frankston can get in the four. But to me, it looks as though they will, because uh, Frankston were leading pretty well over Caulfield last time we heard from them and uh, Paran have been defeated. So we'll get those uh, scores as soon as the final siren goes, if we have the time uh, from here. Not long before siren time now. 21-15 Port Melbourne to Preston's 15-5 and a demoralising one for uh, Preston as Peter Marshall gets the ball up towards the uh, forward zone. Bradbury came in, attempted to take a mark, couldn't do that. And it's John Christo who moves away with it, kicks it around the boundary line on the stand side of the ground. Warren went up tail to take it, but Davis out there, passes across to Grant O'Reilly, who now will be forced to stand his ground. He decides to play it across to Swan, who's playing the loose man. He's roaming everywhere from the centre. Swan hasn't had anyone to counteract him. And his 30th kick about to come up. And the Turak Park uh, match is over with a big win uh, to Camberwell. And we'll be going to, there's the win to Camberwell. Have a look at it. We're well, going to Bill Barrett at the finish of the game here to summarise that and give us his opinion on what he thinks the outcome of the uh, final will be. And uh, Preston now getting the ball back up towards their uh, half forward line. But Davis coming in. There goes the sign to conclude the match here with the Port Melbourne 21-15, 141, leading Preston 15-5, a total of 95. Now, we'll be back here for summaries on the game after this break and for our Best Player Award and the Gillette Mark of the Day. Here in the First Division game, uh, we had Port Melbourne defeating the uh, Preston side, and there it is quarter by quarter, and uh, Port Melbourne going away since uh, half-time. Well, we should be able, or we hope to be able, to give you the final four a little later on, but Bill Barrett, a resounding win over there to Camberwell. Yes, Bill, Camberwell running out easy. Bill, how do you see Portman up for the grand final? I'd say I, I, Port are red-hot favourites, there's no doubt about that, and their, their form today only reinforced my opinion that they're a class above any other side in this VFA competition. There's the clue uh, to their success. The big fellow, Vic Annanson and Fred Cook, two veterans, uh, who both who had to leave the field today, but unless, and it's easier said than done, unless something can be done to combat big Vic Annanson, there is no team in the competition that can beat Port Melbourne. Well, looking at Vic Annanson, that's the second time I've seen him up there receiving the um, 
the award from the Sunbury uh, Barracks. Ted, you'd see uh, Port Melbourne uh, for a flag at this stage. For sure. well, well, there's no doubt, Phil. They've got their the form side and the way they displayed themselves today. They are first class football. They think very well. They team very well, Phil. And as Bill mentioned, they have a dominating player in Vic Anderson. Not only him, of course, Fred Cook, who will be firing, no doubt, in the finals. And Grant O'Reilly at Centre Ford and many players, Phil. They're a very good combination. I cannot see anyone beating them. From statistics, Ian, where did Port have their power? They were significantly stronger in the air. They took a total of 79 marks, Port Melbourne, 56 Preston. And also with Anderson's dominance, the smaller players such as Swan were enabled to get into the game. And we've just been informed that Frankston defeated Caulfield, but we haven't got the margin. So at this stage, it looks as though Frankston could get in just on percentage because they were only uh, slightly behind. Uh, the score's coming up. Here it is. Yes, I'll be in. Uh, they'll be in, Frankston. So they make up the four. Port Melbourne, Preston and it'll be uh, Sandringham and uh, Frankston uh, now. So next week, Frankston will be playing Sandringham in the first semi-final. And don't forget the Liston voting at 9.30 next Wednesday night on Channel 10. So until best then... Best player? Oh, the best player award we have uh, for the, um, uh, for the uh, products by Seidel and also the $50 cash from Seidel and the uh, Puma boots, Ted Hendricks. Yes, sir, Phil. Bill Swan, the best man on the ground. He set them on the path, and Bill Swan played very well all day, and he's the best man, no doubt. Gillette mark of the day, Ted. And the Gillette mark of the day was taken in the first quarter, seven minutes in, actually. It was the mark taken by the centre-half forward, Daryl McGaw of Preston. Another great mark from that player. As quick as it was. Well, that winds it up for today. We hope you've enjoyed the... Well, before we go, Ted, those percentages. Yes, well, Franks and I find making the four, Phil, with a percentage of 95.9%. Peran will miss out 94.117 and Sandringham will take the uh, third place. So that'll be Frankston in fourth place, Sandringham third, and Varane missing out. And we'll give it another go. This is Bill Jacobs, Chad Henrys, Rob Asprey, Ian Gibbs, and Philip Gibbs on behalf of Bill Barrett over in second division, wishing you all a very good afternoon.